Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. He's got the hottest takes with the highest stakes. He should be president of the United States, but it's Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. Cuss Corner. <laughs> Tim, Subway has closed 2,300 Whatever. locations in North America in the last three years. Ever since you proclaimed that they were by far the best food f- fast food restaurant on earth. So we've got you for what could be the last time ever, right, Jeff? I believe that this list might never need to happen again because Subway could be out of business. Extinct yeah. by the next oh, time we get around come to it. Oh, on. <laughs> It is, it is horrible. They made this effort to be Starbucks by showing up everywhere, and obviously it backfired to the extreme. Yeah, their reach extended past their grasp. You know, there's a, there is a subway that is, a, I'd say, a 90-second walk from my front door. You've never been. I've been there, but I haven't been there in like a year and a half. I went. Oh, my I, I actually went to Subway time. recently, and I got what I believe is Tim's favorite sub, and it was a horrible experience. It was like, it was the chicken, and it was like half cold still after it was in the toaster. It was oh, disgusting. we'll take it back. I would take it back. It was disgusting. It just shows it was a microcosm of Subway's downfall. So, Tim, your list of the best Subway subs. The segment not brought to you by Subway. Yeah. So the best sub is definitely the meatball sub. If no. it, especially if it's cut the old way. Now, no one cuts it the fucking old way, Tim. They stopped cutting it the old way over a decade ago. It is becoming harder and harder to find people. When was the last it. time anyone cut you the old way? Never? No, no, never no, is anyone the answer? work in a subway that would still know how to do it? They're no. just like, kid, like, they haven't... There are some people, I'm sure, who remember... No! Them. When you say, I'm sure, that means no. There the was a period... you haven't found them. There was a period after the change. Because like I was still years, in university. Three years, Where, bro. like, the staff were very well aware of the old way and could accommodate it. Now, I don't believe the staff that are in there now are aware. And, and what year did you graduate university? 2007? Maybe, at like, the year before that, but yeah. So it's been 12 years since you've been in college. Yeah. Oh, and man. they had stopped it three years into you okay, being in college. This is the cut that I know and that I like. And for the meatball sub, it's the best because it keeps all the sauce and everything in the bread. Uh, it's the way to go. Uh, it's not the best for all of them, but it is the best. Like in some of them, it just doesn't. No, it matter. is the best for all of them. I agree. It uh, is listen, the I would significantly prefer, better cut. <laughs> I would. I would prefer the old cut for everything. It was the better cut, but I mean, I think it's marginally different for, for many of these subs. It makes a world of difference for the meatball sub, and the meatball sub happens to be delicious. You got your fresh marinara, your meatball. You can add your your veggies. You got your fresh like you know, you, the cheese sort of like brings out some of the the more intense flavors in the marinara. I think they, they marry up quite nicely. Uh, it's a delicious meal. The meatball sub is is really hard to beat. He's uh, t- hold hold on. <laughs> He's talking about Subway, like people talk about pairing wines with meats. Listen, they're called sandwich that, artists. That is a, the, that, that is about as low as you can go. The, here's my problem with the meatball sub. I agree with you. It, it tastes fine enough. Um, but when you go to Subway, isn't the purpose to like, hey, I don't want to go to McDonald's and ingest a, like horrible things for myself. So I'll try to eat a bit healthier when you go to Subway. When you get a meatball sub, you're defeating the purpose. But it's delicious. It's not. But it's not more delicious than like other fast food that is just as bad for you. I don't know. I think yeah, no, like, yes. I, I actually completely agree with where you're going. Yeah, like, I go to Subway. It's like, oh, I'm not going to have like the hamburger. I'm going to have this turkey that tastes like water and is shit. Paul. I would agree with you. I think that the original, uh, the original marketing strategy was to be the healthier option. And that's why no, well, besides being viciously and or cursed, but <laughs> that's why nobody goes there anymore. It's because people have actually figured out that like, hey, if I eat, a foot long sub with all that carbs and bread yeah. and stuff. It's awful for me. It's just as bad for you as McDonald's. Yeah. So, I mean, it depends on which sandwich you get. It's like putting cheese on any of this stuff. Like, if you're actually going to go to Subway to make this stuff like low cal for yourself, uh, basically what you do, instead of getting a foot long, you get the six inch, but you only take like half the bread of it, eat half the bread and don't get the cheese on it. Then all of a sudden you're in the realm of like where. You're not ingesting a bunch of calories. But if you go eat a foot long, it will actually have more calories in it. And then I'm not even talking about the Coke that comes yeah, along with it or the chips or the cookie. Next thing you know, that turkey's got bacon on it. And it's like, uh, yeah, when you could have just went to yeah, yeah. 
Wendy's and got a spicy chicken, and it was better for you at that point. I'm hearing to poke holes in Subway all day. So, so meatball number one, terrible choice, but next. Sweet onion chicken teriyaki is second. Revolting. Just delicious. I Just don't mind. I don't mind it. Third is the Subway Club. It's got Subway in the name. You know it has to be. I mean, what's, on. what's on the Subway Club? I believe it's the roast beef and the turkey, but there's no bacon. I think that's what makes the Subway Club the club. Is that it, the Subway Club? Is it doesn't have bacon on it? I think, the I think it's ham bacon. instead of bacon, so you still get your pork. Maybe that's what it is. Good call. I, you know, I haven't had that in a little bit, but, but it got ranks third. Bacon. Yeah, has to be third. Uh, has to fourth, be third. Fourth is the Philly cheesesteak. This is a seasonal one. But when they make it, again, I've said this before, it's not some original take of that for this show. I think it's the best cheesesteak you can get. They put <laughs> I, I hate pepper it. It, it, the and steak all together, and they sort of, again, and there's more meat than there is on the steak sub. Do we'll talk f- about it in, in, a, in a bit, which, again, is great. It is a flavor profile. Again, it just, it, 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 there's a heightened flavor profile to it that I, I think really, really <laughs> makes it pop. And you add to that the Southwest Chipotle sauce, which is probably the greatest condiment sauce that you can get at a fast food restaurant. Uh, Top notch. Okay, I'll give them the sauce. But as somebody who like just adores real Philly cheesesteaks, real Philly cheesesteaks will like go to a town and be out of his way to like Google where I might need to go to get one. And he'll always smart me on the Twitter to, oh, go. Like I was in Philly, like trying to get opinions from real Philadelphians. And he's, you know, telling me to go to Subway. Th- this take angers me so much. It is this fluffed steak that's not even real. I, I don't, it's like he's never experienced anything to then have these takes. Like even the meatball sub. I could take him somewhere. He would be like he'd never Bring him experienced to a meatball anything shop. anywhere. There's a bunch around. It's a really bothersome take because Philly cheesesteak is like a staple. It's not like a staple thing, but it is like an Americana thing, and they don't do I'll, it good. It's not even good. And, and, and you know why? Agree. Because you, you're going to a place that tries to label itself as healthy. If you're going to eat a Philly cheesesteak, you're just in. You're in for the worst possible for you version because sure. that's going to taste the best. I would even like – I can glad hand bad quality that still like has this generic good taste – it's not even good. That's what bothers. Like it's 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 a bad. It's a bad Philly cheesesteak. Do you think Tim? No one would agree with no, that. No, because you get the real chili, Philly cheesesteak. They have it. They're making it behind you. It's yeah, coming honest, out fresh. Yeah. Oh Do you think Tim God. loves Subway so much because they reheat everything in the microwave? Maybe. And I don't want to get there, but this is like his list is so flawed because he's got something DFL that's called a steak and cheese. <laughs> we'll get into that because it's a phony imitation of a good sandwich, which is this sandwich. It's a phony imitation of it. You, and you get less meat, too. Uh, the spicy Italian is fifth. That's a classic go-to. The spicy Italian is a perfectly unobjectionable, delicious sandwich. Then there's a gap because you know, the, then you're, there's a real de- distance here. The chicken breast, like the heated up chicken breast, it's very tasty. Again, it's a healthier option, whatever. If you're looking to go a little lighter, it's the way to go. Didn't it uh, used to be your he, number one, Paul? No, it was high. But I, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know, I don't actually like it as much as the other ones. It is very tasty, though. You can't go wrong with it. Watch the doc- oh sorry I, I cut you ahead, off there. I Go watched ahead. a documentary recently, uh, maybe about six months ago, and uh, they did all the fast food places who had the least amount of chicken in their chicken or what they advertise as oh, chicken, yeah, and like Subway was far and away the least chicken inside of the sandwich. I think it was like You're like fifty. It was like fifty two percent soy. I, I don't care. It tastes delicious. Oh, soy boy, no, Tim, Tim People People brought this to Tim's attention. I remember these articles that their yeah, chicken was me. tested to not uh, be chicken. I, I, I still taste delicious. It has those grill marks on it, so you know it's good. <laughs> I, I like it. Sorry. I'm, I'm, all, I'm in. Then there's the Italian BMT, <laughs> which is essentially the spicy Italian with, with one extra meat on it. But actually, it doesn't work as well as the spicy Italian. So it's below that. Then we have your breakfast subs. Uh, you know, Subway, I would say four, five, six years ago, whenever it was, introduced themselves into the breakfast market. It is an interesting and good sort of change of pace from your other fast food breakfast places. So the sausage and egg and then the uh, the bacon and egg are both good. But I recommend getting the flat bread for the health purposes. There's too much bread at breakfast time. You're, the egg and the sausage is already heavy enough. Can we please stop? 
Move to the flatbread. Th- this is and this is where this list becomes unreal because Tim has been shown multiple times <laughs> with the actual subway chart of health. Yeah, that I, don't the, the, I, told, you know, I don't believe. I don't. He just denies it, even on people's shows. How are, can a, how can a piece of bread that is so thin, it's like a quarter of an inch, how can that possibly be worse for you than the big thick? Fluffy breads with the cheese. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm incredulous. I cannot believe that to be the case. You know, when we tell you that you live your truth, this is a very prime example of that. Here it, are the facts. Well, I don't believe the facts. No, he's literally <laughs> dismissing people trying to give him real information. Yes, because he in, wants to believe what he believes is actually better for he him. He yes. fails to believe that is possible. Well, sometimes I fail to believe in the concept of dinosaurs, but science tells me they existed, Feinberg. Tim, I hear he's out on science. <laughs> what do they have to gain by lying about how many carbs is in the flatbread? That's that's what. I, why are I you? Like, no, like, no, I feel like it's just a misprint. And why are you going it's full Alex misprint. Jones about this, I man? The truth's like out there. Was, I think it was a misprint, and that it's sort of been circulated around, and then people doesn't matter what you say anymore. It's like, oh, you know, flatbreads are. Worse. I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> how can it be so? It just. Yeah. Hold on, those. Some, no, people. some some people are on Reddit like r slash Epstein. Epstein didn't kill himself. R slash flat Earth. Tim is on r slash flatbread. Secretly bad for you compared to a real bread. Here's the thing. No, it just it. it Tim is believe. just making reference believe. to the subway calorie guide. What about just looking at what a uh, like there's other flatbreads and breads. Yeah, it, it's the high density of the bread that gets you. Yes, it's thinner, but it's more compact. It's more concentrated. Where the fluffy bread is basically so all the fluff. There's a are lot you, of air in there. Are that. you here to tell me the Domino's cracker crust isn't technically like healthier and less carbs than the fully fluffed pizza? That's what I'm telling you, Jeff. Here, I thought I was on to something. <laughs> Why do you think it's important to not have as many carbs in the morning when you, like, you can eat all the carbs you want because you're going to work it off over the course of the day? Like, why do you want to save c- carbohydrates first thing in the morning? That's my this question like it's about heavy this. And that this, for health purposes, you'd want to go with the lighter option. That's all. That's why I'm recommending it that way. Okay. Well, fair, is this almost enough. done? Because I got some yes, rebuttals. There is. Then Gap. The roast beef. I don't know why anyone gets a roast beef sandwich at, at Subway. It's not even, like it's the cold roast beef, whatever, I guess. The veggie, eh, you know, whatever, I guess. If you're a vegetarian, I suppose that's your way to go to Subway. The chicken bacon ranch. Ranch is a trash dressing, so anything with ranch on it's going to be trash. Tuna, because, oh, God, tuna fish is awful. And then last is steak and cheese, because it's a cheap and uh, s- uh, slight impersonation of the Philly cheesesteak, which is excellent. And that is the list. I, they're the exact same thing. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I've Very never good. gone to... So you're telling me if I go... I ask for the Philly cheese or the steak and cheese, there'll be two completely different outcomes? There's different... The onions and the peppers are fried up in the meat with the, uh, the Philly cheesesteak, as I remember it. And whereas you have to get the, the raw ones if you wanted to go steak and cheese. It's just not as good. It's just not as good. Do they even make this Subway sandwich anymore? Yeah, it's seasonal. Okay, I got a couple... My biggest question to you is, just as like a sandwich guy, if this is the preeminent sandwich place and you've listed like 14 sandwiches and you don't have a turkey sandwich, like the place must suck. They must not know how to do it. I don't particularly care for their sliced turkey that much. Because it tastes like water. Which is why it's not on the list. I'm not a drink a, I could go to Subway and have a turkey sandwich or I could drink a tall glass of water. You drink a Dustin Johnson? Yes. Um, also, let's not forget, we'll put it out there. Anyone close to Tim, Tim's family and friends, this is the time of year where Tim is now buying his yes, I was $25 mention- Subway gift card so he gets a free lunch. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. Let me frame it properly. So, yeah, this is top uh, Wait, cat. I didn't top- frame it properly? This is Top Cat giving plus EV approach to people. Here, listen. Christmas is approaching. You're going to want to buy gifts. For a lot of people, you don't know what to buy. Gift cards are great. So when you buy somebody a gift card, unless they specifically tell you where they want the gift card to, they'll be happy with any regular place. So if you go to Subway, you get you get a gift card. Subway will give you a free sit in sub if you buy a card over a certain amount. So you buy the, the card, and you're going to give the gift, and it's a genuine gift that you're giving. But why not get the sub in return as well? Why buy the card somewhere? If it doesn't matter to them, if they say, oh, I don't care where you get it from, then why not get it from somewhere that – well, they'll like, and you'll benefit from it. Because some of us are going to value out of it. This is a plus EV approach. So, Ima- 
Imagine giving, imagine being an adult in your 30s and giving someone a Subway fucking gift card for Christmas. It is, it's a great idea. I do it. You should do it I too. Get and again, Subway out of it too. I mean, what is there not to like? Like, Christmas is the season for giving. Why not give to yourself too? Nobody wants that. I would be enraptured. You're getting it for yourself already. What if I got the card? Like I used no, to but love are it. you buying yourself? Like you're keeping gift cards because you. You can should get always lunch. keep a couple of gift cards on hand at Christmas time in case someone shows up that you didn't expect and has a gift for you. No, you but I have. mean, like, let's just say we're not seasonally. You have no one to buy a gift card for. You will still buy it because you will spend that money at Subway anyway. So just get a free lunch. No, he it. doesn't do that. You would advise no, that though, wouldn't he, you? I don't. I don't do that. No, that's that's what you should actually be doing. If you're if you're the one going to Subway, because yeah. you could give the gift to yourself, because you're going to use and it, I'm and you get a free yeah. meal. And these people who are telling you they don't know or they're happy with whatever, they're lying. They don't want a Subway gift card. Well, at this point, they know if they say that to me, they're getting a Subway gift. Card. <laughs> that is what I'm going to buy. Why don't you get one of them like a Visa spend card? Because. If it doesn't matter he to doesn't them, get six dollars lunch. Yeah. You're, so you're just selfishly doing this for yourself. No, it's not selfishly. It is I'm selfish. A gift. I'm giving them a he gift. He gets a free six inch meatball lunch, <laughs> and you get a subway gift card. Yeah, I mean it's a win win. Again, it's plus EV. I'm trying to maximize value out of this world. You are not trying to maximize it. That's the difference between you and I. I mean, I just, when I give my friends gifts and my family gifts, I'm just hoping that they're not going to stab me at some point because the gift sucks so much. Okay? And that's a problem for you when you're giving out Subway gift cards. I have never had a crossword or a, oh, Subway. I've always had, <laughs> thanks, that's great. I, I really appreciate what, it. What so, do you, as someone who's around sometimes when you're not around, what do you think people say about that <laughs> when you're not around? I think they say that was a thoughtful gift. No, they don't. They're like, the fuck is wrong with this idiot? Nah, I, Tell him I, to give his head a shake. <laughs> oh, no, it's like, nah, just leave him be. It's Tim. But I'm glad you brought it up, Jeff, because that was on my list. I mean, it's getting to that time of year where, you know, Black Friday's approaching. You know, you can get all your Christmas shopping done Black <laughs> Friday. Just go to Subway and buy $250 worth of Subway gift cards. <laughs> and you get tons of Subway to go with it. You can get enough maybe to Wouldn't get... Wouldn't that be a bad <laughs> approach? Shouldn't, like, let's say you had to buy five Subway gift cards. Shouldn't you technically go just go five different times to get lunch? Well, I think... I bet you that you could get like a party sub for that for that amount. What of would you want to do with a party sub? No one wants to eat your fucking subway besides you. No, you could, people like subway. You could cater an event with it or something. I don't know. I, I'm thinking extemporaneously here. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I buy the subway gift cards so I can get a party sub, which you could cater an event All with. I'm gonna, a party sub. I just want to make what sort of sure event is this that you're happy with a meatball sub on Sunday because you're gonna have to wash it down with Diet Pepsi, sir. You would have yeah. to anyway. They only serve Pepsi at Subway. It's true. Oh, it's However, true. however they're cooking. They've got some new delicious cookies out. There's this pink they lemonade. They always have good cookies. cookies. cookies and they do. Good. And a they're caramel soft. apple one. They're soft and they have like neat flavors. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Subway cookie. Hold it's, on. Uh, it's a a pink delicious. lemonade cookie? It is delicious. I got yes, it's at all the Subways. Let my wife. Oh, man, it's good. So I do have one more note here is that I want to congratulate Tim, who has been a doctor for three years now. Congratulations, sir. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Three years, Jeff. I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Since we changed his name on the graphic from Tim Andercast to Dr. Tim Andercast. That's when you accuse me of wearing a clown outfit. That is. I thought it was a jester's outfit, but it wasn't. Apparently, that's when you become a doctor. That's what they give you. Yeah, that was the regalia. Um, However, did you know that Doug the Pug just received an honorary doctorate from Vanderbilt, and he won the People's Choice Award for Animal Star of 2019? He didn't even have to go to school. Didn't. I worked five years to get that PhD, and they're just giving it out to him for nothing. Doesn't it devalue yours? Sort of. (laughs) And just giving it to a dog? No, I mean, you mean mean Dr. the Pug? That's what the D stands for now, Dr. Dr. Doug the Pug. You don't even have that on him. <laughs> oh, that makes me very angry. <laughs> Is that your Marvin the Martian impression? Yes. Can you try that one again? 
Oh, that makes me very angry. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. No, that was a horrible impression. Good for Tim. Tim impressions. Oh, oh, but, <clears throat> and now I gotta get my voice ready for it. That makes me very angry. That's a better Marvin the Martian than yours. Yeah, that, that was pretty good. Yours just sounds like you doing Christopher <laughs> Walken. Hiya! That's that even a bit. That, that's a bad Miss Piggy. My wife does the best Miss Piggy impression, but that one is also horrible. You, you have the cadence of the hi yeah wrong. Okay. Hi yeah. Yeah. See, you have the. You don't do the right impression, but that's the right cadence. Tim's off on the cadence of it. Should we get back to the games? Yes. Um, or do you have anything else, Jeff? I don't know. You, gonna, you want to leave this last thing? Oh, Don Cherry getting fired? Yeah. He's fired. He's 85 years old. Time to go. Okay, got to yeah. take the hike, pal. And Time it, to go. It, it's funny because what he said got him in a bunch of shit. And people can Google it. They can Google it. But he said way worse. He see, that's the whole thing. He gets the benefit of the doubt if he didn't have a 40-year history of saying this stuff. Absolutely. I, I, you, could, you could convince me that he misspoke and that's not what he meant. Mm-hmm. If, he didn't, if he didn't have a track record of saying the exact same fucking thing over and over. Exactly. If this was like Fred Penner or Dr. Dress Up on CBC saying well, this, he'd have gotten Penner. Or just say Mr. Rogers. That's probably a, Rogers, a ubiquitous like, example of this. Yeah, sure. Those are pe- like, they would have be given the benefit of the doubt of he misspoke or he said something that was inappropriate. He'll apologize. And whatever. But yeah, <laughs> Chip Perry has a track record of saying uh, awful things. And so it was time for him to go. It was time for him to go. But there have been rumors for a couple of years. They've kind of like leaked things in the press. And then there was a bit, they, they sort of saw more public back roar than they thought. So like, okay, we'll keep them around. But they've been waiting for this door. They've been trying yeah. to cut money there. Um, yeah, they're, lo- they're bleeding yeah. money. They, they're in that NHL deal that is killing them. They have tried to dump all their big high-priced talent for the most part um, outside of a couple like hockey insiders. Uh, they've all been been gone there, so. Yeah, like if the if this was incident number one of eighty five year old Don Cherry, he would have gotten a so pass. So I guess my not. question: You think is Taylor's mad? <sighs> I saw a tweet problem. last night that Fabricville is filing for bankruptcy. <laughs> it's funny. So <laughs> next October, what is first intermission? Who cares? Just a panel, just That's a regular it. highlights. Rest of yeah, I'm just like highlights. I assume now no, they're no. not. I assume for the rest of the year. They're not going to try to, like, replace no. it. They're just no. going to, like, try to ride out the season. It would be a lot funnier if they brought back Don Cherry, but he was just wearing, like, fake glasses and a mustache, and they pretended it wasn't him. And he was, like, his, just someone else, and they just put him back on air anyway, because people are pissed that he's not on. Oh, people, the, the whole, like, Don Cherry is right, or boycotts, like, yeah, things are... You had to go, man. Yeah, but here's the thing. You can't boycott Sportsnet if you weren't watching in the first place. <laughs> Tough look. <laughs> and the whole, like, how many tweets did you see in the last day saying, like, Trudeau got to keep his job, but Cherry didn't? Well, I think that's actually a perfect example of it, that you have one person who does something that is just awful and does blackface from 25 years but ago. But he's an all-around good guy. But he he's had, perceived as. But he's perceived as and has, I mean, he's the prime minister yeah. for one thing, but his platform is for inclusion. Good guy culture. And standing up for people's rights. So he gets a pass for it. Whether that's right or wrong, that's for you to decide. But it seemed like people decided when they re-elected him that, you know, he's done... What he says now is who he is, not who he was back then. This is just the same thing from Cherry over and over. Yeah, I- that's the difference between it, I think, at least. Tim's not weighing in because he hates Trudeau. Don Cherry had to go. That's all there was to it. <laughs> all right. And before we fully move on, what did you mean here by drafts of tweets? Because oh. I feel like that's a hidden gem for something Tim related. No, that's actually a me thing. Just the amount of tweets that I write. And don't send. That I just delete are probably more than I do send. Because you're just like, I don't want to deal with... It, well, it the, ties the into reply. the cherry thing. Like, I just... In the heat of the moment, I key, tee up some... I've been very... It's like the same reason I don't tweet when I drink. Yeah. Um, you're very disciplined. I, I have great respect. I will not... Like, you. there's you no... I want to go down rabbit holes. There is no upside to it. And I got some good singers, Jeff. Some great uh, singers. I know you well And then enough. I have to share them with my wife. And then she's like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. Like, why are you like this? So yeah. I was like, I got to tell someone. It's boiling up. I can't tweet it out, yeah. although I want to. Yeah. 
That's anyway. what the group chat's for, boys. Yeah. The, yeah. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, my, wait, wait till oh. that hack comes out. Oh, boy. My group, <laughs> yeah, that would be the end. That's of, the end uh, of everyone, by the way. We've had, like, all these people are going back in time now and yeah. finding, like, stuff Someone, that you tweeted. Yeah. Someone's going to hack group chats on whether it's WhatsApp, Twitter Messenger, Facebook Messenger, Instagram Messenger. It's all going to come out, and it's going to turn out that every single person in the world is a horrible piece of shit. When they're like that South Park episode when everyone's internet history was released. Oh yeah, <laughs> I like that Love episode Mexican or the Joker. or the one where they had Tim Mexican Joker, the one or where they had to make Butters take all of the bad tweets and read them <laughs> from everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was uh, tweets of draft drafts of tweets. Just because I, I had some someone said something just completely moronic to me this morning i had just had it lined up i said you know what i'm just gonna hit the mute button and not think about it again you've got good willpower with that gotta gotta have it <laughs> tim yeah. released a list of best cookies i'm just fighting through yeah i, 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 lost tim. I did lose tim so tim can you please rattle off your list of best cookies please him. Oatmeal raisin is by far the best cookie. I almost wanted to put a gap after it. It's both the healthiest type of cookie because it's oatmeal and raisins fruit, and it's also delicious, and uh, so it's number one. Oatmeal Can chocolate I- chip is two because I-, I think oatmeal is delicious, and chocolate chips is the next thing down from raisins. Then peanut butter, <laughs> then molasses, then Oreo. Oreo is so good that it's in it in the first cut. Of, you know, even though it's a factory cookie, it's in the first cut of cookies. So then Oreo, then there's a gap. Then you have shortbreads, arrowroots, the PC decadent chocolate chip cookies. They're to die for. Pirate cookies, fudgios. Then there's a gap. Then you have ginger ginger cookies. They got to be soft, though. Digestives, thin mints, jam cookies. Another gap. Sugar, macadamia, Teddy Grahams. And the DFL is all non-original Oreos. And yes, that includes double stuffed, also trash, only original Oreos. Weird. I mean, there was something you should have considered before making this list, though. He factoring health, and that was one of his reasons why oatmeal raisin yeah, he, is number the, the one. The main thing he should have done before making this list was give his fucking head a shake. This is ridiculous. Do you, are you constipated a lot of the time? Like, you have probiotic cookies on here. <laughs> <laughs> They're delicious. I don't know, man. You're weird. I like, stand by every one of them. I'm sure you do. I mean, if you ate more than these, you wouldn't be able to stand. Like, You'd be like one of those guys that's get cut out of the side of his house. Now, listen, for a generic store-bought chocolate chip, as we'll probably have to explain to our, as I joked with Pat before the show, I can't believe we're going to need to spend 20 seconds explaining the PC decadent uh, to our American listeners. But it's just a, it's an, a much fancier like Chips Ahoy. Yeah. yeah. It's still and just better. a generic store cookie. Yeah. Also, Teddy Grahams aren't cookies. They're crackers. <laughs> I think they're cookies. They're well, sweet. they're not. They're, they're crackers. It's a cookie. They're crackers. I will say cookie. I vote cookie on the teddy bear. Paul, you have Thank a question. You. I notice a lot of hard cookies on this list, Tim. Well, because there are some good cookies that are hard. Soft cookies are the, and again, credit to me, I've won now two polls in four days. So I'm on a heater when I come to the poll. But, so uh, you, you, you've, you've put up two polls where no one was disagreeing polls. with you. I'm just, I'm not saying people were agreeing or disagreeing. I'm no, 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 no. But the, the whole point of you putting up the polls is that you have some sort of take that you think that everyone has. And we tell you that they don't have that take because the people agree with us. But now oh you've gone with two things that we've agreed with you on and put those polls up. You've, got, a, you you've got baby cookies ahead of chocolate chip. <laughs> I stand by that. Do you ever? They're might- fantastic. And, and fantastic. hold on, hold on. You listen, I'm going to go where I went with the pancakes. And I've had a rough day. My dog died. I'm I'm not. I go. I'm having moments, bad ones. <laughs> but I've got to say what I asked you when we did when you did a pancake thing once. Does anyone like love you? <laughs> because how there is not like just homemade chocolate chip cookie on this. Like, does that not count? Does that, like I don't understand I, I what even you're talking say, about. Put on Subway chocolate chip cookies. Done. In on that. No, it's so weird. And and there's a couple of things I don't even know what these are. Like, what the fuck are arrow roots? That's the baby <laughs> cookie. Those are my baby cookie. It's like cookie. a baby cookie. It's like you know, there's a baby you on mean the, the, one, the one that I give to my child. Potentially, like where are, where are girl guide cookies, which are significantly better than like half of these. Maybe those. Are I the thought thin what is a digestive? Thin it's thin a probiotic cookie. It's like the shit. 
to make you regular. No. So that's like that, that's Howard why Stern he has, is talking about his Apple Crisp Metamucil cracker? Yes. Tim. No, no, <laughs> like, no. Di- digestives are a type of cookie that's like the chocolate the, on one side and it's like graham on the other. It's a very good cookie. Are you talking about like the Peak Farms or, or yes. what is that? Yes. Yeah, they help exactly. you ship. No, that they're, they're actually excellent. And there is girl guy cookies. Peak Farms, right? Peak Farms. There are girl guy cookies on their thin mints are there. And I'm imagine I'm surprised you don't have like a loser uh, like a Fig Newton on here. Well, he has right? molasses cookies. Gross. Paul? Molasses cookies are delicious. Do you ever microwave your cookies to soften them? I've never done that, but I do microwave. Look the two into bite, it. <laughs> I do microwave the two bite brownies before I eat those. No, the decadent chalk and chip ones. That? You microwave those things. If you even if you have a little bit of chocolate sauce, throw it in the microwave for like twenty seconds. You'll soften them right up. Amazing. I used to do it when that I was like a, ch- a small child. I haven't done it in forever because I'm not that a small child. Delicious. But yeah, y- your love of microwaves and cookies just came together. This is as egregious. You're welcome. See, it's like the hollow, like the. He, it's a really bad list. Um, no, it's not. Yeah, it, it's horrendous. Like it's it's embarrassing for one thing. Like I would be ashamed to leave my house, but that's not a problem for you. So, as we found Apparently out, apparently I have no shame. I, well, that's very clear by most of the stuff that you put on the internet. Shame is oh, just not raisin, something. Oatmeal oh, chocolate chip are delicious. Home fresh made ones out of the oven, or peanut butter, uh, soft and and chewy out of the oven, can't be beat. Won't be beat. Uh, I would say the chocolate chip beats them. Jeff, you? Nah. I love chocolate chip. I mean, I love a peanut butter cookie. I, but it's I, fine. What about a sugar cookie, man? Eh. I'm in the middle. Eh. What's a pirate bottom, cookie? Yeah, what is a pirate cookie? It's those ones, again, that you get them at the store. It's the oatmeal outside with the peanut butter in the middle. It's like it's shaped like an Oreo. It's like a sandwich-style cookie. You get them at the oh, store. but it's like a peanut butter cookie. How about isn't this? It? How about you just yeah, eat peanut butter in the middle, oatmeal on the top how, and bottom? How about you start eating like your age? You know way too much about cookies, Tim. Cookies are delicious. Everybody likes cookies. Cookies are fine, but you know, as you get older, so you don't have to eat your probiotic cookies, that you know, maybe just thin out your diet a little bit here. Not not pound the cookies into you. I'm not. I don't pound the cookies. You into should be me, pounding but... some of these sugar cookies over the holiday and giving it a much better ranking. That's a really low ranking. Mm, for... I think sugar cookies are very overrated. They're very filler. <laughs> but oatmeal raisin cookies are where it's at. I love. How... It's like. I. It's like. But again, there's a health factor too. It's it's le- it's a breakfast cookie. As I was saying to Paul <laughs> oh earlier today. It's like it's really to me that's a breakfast cookie. A, a breakfast. Hashtag cookie. breakfast cookie. Yeah, like ha- a, hashtag a, diabetes. How many? When's the last time you had a cookie for breakfast? Are you like one of those by like you would eat like a chocolate chip like granola bar and think it's like a balanced breakfast? I don't know. I do. <laughs> but like I've had pie for breakfast before, and like I've had. Well, didn't he tell us know, last week what he pulled out of the fr- uh, chicken? That wasn't last week. That was yeah, yeah. He had raw chicken or something. It wasn't raw. It was cooked. It was just cold. I've had pie for breakfast. Sure. I mean, it was, it, it, I, we're, we're, and I know other people. By, by the way, we're, we're putting that on your tombstone next year, <laughs> by the way. My pie grandmother My grandmother had a brownie for breakfast every day for like two and a half. Tim, you bring up your grandmother a lot. I'm sure she's a sweet woman, but I don't think she had the best health eating standards. That should be replicated in today's day and age. Not exaggerating. Two and a half years, every single day, she had a brownie for breakfast. Like a, a what? But she stopped. She would bake them. But no, she just got tired. Everything's starting to make so much sense. That does make a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's all coming together. I also have one question: How old is your grandma? Like eighty something? Yeah, late seventies. How do you? I don't want to. If you still have grandma questions, you can stay there. No, no, I was just saying, like, whatever the health guide was in 1954, that's what she's going with. That's what Tim is sticking to in 2019. How do you eat your Oreo? I eat it whole. Don't rip it apart like a savage. It's like a Kit Kat bar. Don't <laughs> play with your food like a child. Uh, also, do you know what you he does? Bite out of it? Hold on, hold on, hold on. But, uh, we, you know, we completely glossed over in all of this. What? You know, don't you? That Tim dip, dips his cookies in orange juice? <laughs> Not just oh, orange off. juice. Sometimes I'll use carbonated water instead. That's, that's <laughs> disgusting. Oh my god. Oreos so. and Perrier. Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because you gotta soften up the cookie a little bit. And I don't like milk. I know if you if I liked milk, I'd use milk, but I don't care for the taste of it. So orange juice will do, but I have carbonated water around all the time. So in a pinch, carbonated water is, is a great substitute. And I've used it a bunch. 
and it actually gives it sort of a fresh taste, if you know what I mean. Like it does. Uh, no, like, no, I do not know what you mean. Can you please explain that? Well, you don't add additional flavors to it. You sort of enhance it. Uh, sort of it sort of brings out uh, some of the flavors. It brings of, out the chocolate like wafer and the cream filling. <laughs> yeah, I dunk it in some, like in a glass of, uh, like I have a, one of those soda stream machines, so I'll make, uh, you know, sparkling water for myself. And Hold I, on. I have it. Why do you own a soda stream machine yet still pump all those Diet Coke, like buy <laughs> felt, like cases of Diet Cola? Because I'd have to have water as well. But like that thing, well, can't that make it? Yeah, make he it. can make it. He doesn't know how to do that. He can just make the water. Well, yeah, it doesn't make pop. It makes water. No, it, 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 it <laughs> makes it makes soda stream. It makes man. soda, Tim. <laughs> yeah, soda water. No. This is unbelievable. It, yes, it does it's make soda, soda water. It also makes other things. You just don't know how to use it. You can get like mix, mixes. You could probably buy your own DC. See, yeah, Coke has a soda stream. You probably buy your own like what? classic cream soda. That's like the what? clear. Yes. I didn't know this. I thought you could only make what on the commercials. All they make is the water. No, they don't. Yes, they don't. <laughs> they. L- I had no. No, no. I just make the water. <laughs> I just drink it either from a glass or right out of the the bottle. Drink it right out of the bottle. A big glass. Yeah, that happens. It's called Soda Stream. <laughs> Yeah, like, I meant like, like just like, like it's soda called water. Pizza Delight. No, it's I in the name. Like soda That's where you got to go for Italian food, though. Pizza Delight. No, pizza must be water. Italian. Oh my god! I so are you? I can't believe he has pie for breakfast. <laughs> I haven't in a long time, but I have on it. By, by a long time, you mean like, like Wednesday? No, like the day after Thanksgiving, like a piece of pumpkin pie that's ice cold for breakfast. That's that's a thing. Ice cold pumpkin. Hold on a second. We're not going to Paul had a question. He, he said that and he put his hand down. I didn't want to know the answer. <laughs> oh no, I want to hear the question now. <laughs> I, I just wanted him to go back to like orange juice and the cookies. Like that's that that's awful. absolutely like it's it's awful. It's actually but, quite tasty. Like it makes me uncomfortable. And I like that, I like cho- like chocolate orange like I like that mix but yeah like, well it's like an interplay of sweet and sour and it's like, like dipping and, a cookie in water is like cool. I don't want to so, add soda acidity water. to my cookie. <laughs> well, I like it, and I think you should try it, and then I think if you do, you'll be on my side. I don't oh, know. I've tried it. I it honestly awful. am rattled. I don't know what the fun like the best thing that just happened was the the pie the soda stream not knowing how to use it the dipping in the orange juice there's a lot to like, unpack yeah. <laughs> oatmeal raisin is the number one cookie this isn't Rand mcnally tim like a lot just happened it's overwhelming to you a bit but i need it it's this healthy is, for this me is brightening today. up your day it is this is much better than our political betting discussion um, no, I'm amazed. I'm again amazed that you can do that. I wish there's another Canadian election coming. Uh, would you just tell people to vote for whoever you bet on? No, I, I, um, sorry, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. There, there's like a greatest hits from just what just happened alone. Oh, I did forget to tell people to leave the time codes. No one did it last week. Apparently, if I don't say it at the top of the show, despite saying continue to do it so we can make it best of, then people fucked off and then just complained that the wrong file was uploaded and then didn't review the show. Didn't like that, Jeff. Like, not, one bit. I look, not how I wanted to on. wake up. Do you not see Tim? Maybe I'm wrong, but I see Tim as a guy that would actually read, like, buy a soda stream and read the instructions and literally read does, the entire He does seem like a Manuel book. reader, but I think everything's online now. So he doesn't know how to do that. And like on the box, like look at the box and read the box, and like it probably shows the like eight different flavors of soda that they have packets for, like the Nespresso's or yeah, it's what it is for cola. Tim once told me every time he got a new video game, he would read the manual from beginning to end before playing said game. That that is true. That I- takes. <laughs> an amount of discipline that is unnecessary that is so uh, I, I i could not even comprehend that like the most, only way you get so excited when you're a kid to get a video game yeah you just want to get it home you open it up put it in start playing it not tim now <laughs> i remember being in san diego san diego many christmases ago and my grandma got me the monday night raw game for genesis but i was in san diego so I didn't have my console, and I powered through that manual 
like all trip. Couldn't wait to get home though. To play it. To play it. Oh God. Uh that's well, really I, fun too. Reading's not that fun. That's why podcasts are big now, because people hate reading. You know what reading's for? Losers. That's what it's for. <laughs> well, you would strike me as a guy that would always like have a book. No, I used to, but I just listen to podcasts now. It's much easier. I can listen to more podcasts. They're not as, I don't have to spend as much of my time. And I can go out and do things. Like I can't walk down the street reading a book. Although I see people in the city do it. And I intentionally walk into them with my shoulder down. Like, keep your fucking head up, pal. What's your goddamn problem? It's like people who look at their phones walking down the road. I try to walk into them and knock them over. Because they have to, someone has to, like, enforce this stuff. Or society will go to hell. <laughs> Tim, you said you had a list of things that we could choose to talk about. Would you please give us the list? Yeah, I wanted to say we could talk about the relatively, well, new to me, shortcut keys that I've been discovering. I uh, thought we could talk about those. And then something that blew up that I had no expectation was going to blow up was I tweeted out the best things to mix with cereal, and that just went viral and back. Well, considering you had hot water above milk on your best things to mix with cereal, I, I can see why people had a strong reaction to that. I, I stand by that claim. If you're eating shredded wheat or puffed wheat or oatmeal or cream of wheat, hot water is the mix. Some people like mix their cream with milk instead of uh, water. You said cereal, Tim. Puffed wheat, shredded wheat, hot water is the play. What, what are you, 90, 90 fucking five years old? No, I just think it's better. Why do you eat the similar foods as people with no teeth? This is what I grew up eating, and it's what I like, and it's what I know. I mean, you just you can evolve into better things. You realize that. I again, I understand you don't believe in evolution, but <laughs> you were just, on, you were on the wrong sides of the Scopes Monkey Trial, pal. <laughs> can you name somebody who was involved in that trial? No, I just remember I just remember it from Inherit the Wind. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah well, before we get to this because i i don't th did you have more besides the shortcuts and the cereal list that, that was the principal thing i also wanted to ask about i should have brought this up on the thanksgiving show something i did the other day at lunch i decided to use cranberry sauce as a dipping sauce for my chicken wings I wanted to see how it tasted and it was excellent and That's if i were a chicken wing ranking sauce Oh, no. I think cranberry would be very high on oh, that. Oh, no, no, no. See, here's the, here's the thing. I'm, like, I have a take on this. I can see that not being bad. Yeah, it's not weird. It's chicken not, and sauce, like uh, turkey and sure. cranberry sauce is a thing, so. However, if I was getting chicken wings, I wouldn't get cranberry yeah, sauce. Thank you. Well said. Done. Imagine if you like mixed gravy and cranberry sauce together. Wait, did I mean, you go outside for another cigarette? Because you, you sound like yeah, you're man, moving around. You're, you're really, you're really what? driving the yeah, audio. Yeah, you're really quiet. We can hear you right shuffling now, around. I think I you should have to have your, you no, I think you have to turn your video on so we can monitor you're you. You're trying to make my job hard or something. This I is, haven't moved. And you're all over. Over the place. It's such a lie. You're such a, a liar. Lie. It's a bigger lie than evolution. <laughs> I haven't moved from my recliner. Cranberry sauce happens to be an excellent chicken. I think that would be a million dollar idea. You could bottle like cranberry chicken wing sauce. Like mix that in like French Red Hot or that in gravy. No, see now that, now, okay, now we're getting disgusting. Why would I want to dip my chicken wings into cranberry sauce mixed with Frank's Red Hot? Frank's Red Hot sucks to begin with. Oh, I love Frank's Red of Hot. Of course you do. That, that makes perfect sense. Frank's Red Hot is fucking disgusting. I think it's delicious. I love chicken wings. I love chicken wings as well. Buffalo, barbecue, honey would, garlic. So you don't, like, you're hot. not, you don't do hot. No, hot and honey. A uh, hot, hot's that's fine not, too. That's hot, not hot. hot. No, hot. I can do hot wings. Hot, yeah. Hot, yeah, but hot isn't hot. Like you need to go suicide or hot. No, that's not for me. I want to like. That's hot. Yes, but I don't want and to. And even suicide's not that hot. But still, I don't want to eat like wings oh, yeah. and like be uncomfortable like, like chugging night. like all these waters. Like a medium wing. It's delicious. I get the, the zing. You get the but sweat. I, yeah, but I'm not like, <laughs> like I'm not like I'm still enjoying. I'm eating it for dinner. It's not like a tasting. I One suppose I, 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 I shut up, shut up. I'm trying to talk. So am I. Yeah. Well, no one cares. It's now Pat's time because it's Pat's show. Unless you want to host the show again. Is that what you want to do? No. Are you sure? Cause it sounds no. like you want to. No, not really. 
I'll throw to you. I know the story you're going to tell. Um, but this, the taste of like the suicide sauce generally is really good. And suicide's not that hot is mm. the thing. Just I'm not an anti it. Yeah. Paul, when you go, you always get the what? Sorry, when I go where? When we get wings on Sunday, what do you get? I just got hot wings. Just get regular hot wings. I get... Like the sweet heat I'm into too these days. I get uh, honey garlic wings with suicide on the side so I can dunk it in the suicide mm. sauce. But I do like the bit of the honey garlic taste. So, Tim, you can tell your story... Hot and honey, though, is uh, one of my favorite wing joints. It's like a hot honey garlic. So, Tim, you can tell your story about death wings. Yeah, the, one of the very first times Pat and I went out for wings was actually on an American Thanksgiving. I think it was the Thanksgiving of 2008. We went out to our... Uh, a local bar and pat ordered uh death wings now to get these wings you have to sign a waiver this is how hot they are he took one bite steam started coming out of his ears his face went as red as i've ever seen someone go instantaneously he spent the next hour drinking nothing but milk and packets of sugar, sugar. In, in order to like cool down his like remember when homer put his tongue on the mexican insanity chili pepper that's what happened to pat when he took a bite out of this death wing it was an experience not to be missed. And that, that, that sort of ingrained in my brain. It was like, why would I do that to myself? Why well, would I want to taste I, that side? I'm a, if I have to eat like a, not like a flavor chicken wing, but like a traditional style, I go with either medium or mild. I like the flavor of buffalo. <laughs> so but I don't like, the, I don't like, the I, what do you, like, I've seen you order mild chicken wings in uh, somehow you just don't see the look that the server ever gives no, you. Be like, mild look at this wings. coward. And Mild chicken wings with a side of blue cheese. That's my go-to. Death wings was too hot. But I like to go because I really enjoy the heat that I want to go to the highest amount of heat that I can handle. I could not handle death wings. We also have our friend, shout out to Artie, who claimed that since he's Persian, he knows how to handle heat, unlike White Pat. He also took one bite and had to give up. Then our other friend came in and just pounded 20 of them. Yeah, I, I would. It was incredible. Like everyone's there dying in the bar because they've taken one bite of this chicken wing. A friend orders 10, pounds them back, orders another 10, pounds them back. He's fine. The only thing that helped me was smoking. I smoked like eight cigarettes in a row to like numb all the taste buds in my mouth. It was a production. And uh, yeah, it's bad news. My I like mild. I like more flavors than I do spice when it comes to chicken wings. That's the way I am. You sound like a sissy. No, I just enjoy the the sort of like the flavor profiles of things. There's a place we go where they make like a mustard one, which is oh, delicious. That sounds awful. I like it. I'm, pro- I'm going to have wings on Thursday. I'm sure there'll be mustard flavored ones and exotic ones. Not Jamaican jerk, though. It's funny because like jerk chicken is excellent. I don't know if I'd want it as a sauce for a chicken wing, but like just jerk chicken in general is very, very good. I can't say I've ever had it. I could see Tim like loving like the salt and pepper like Chinese Those, food wings. Yeah, the, the lemon pepper wings. Le- uh, for, sorry, uh, lemon pepper. T- Tim, t- Tim's rankings of chicken wings and where you can get them. Number one, Manchu Wok, the best in the biz. Manchu Wok makes great chicken wings. Like if you get there early when they take the, the first batch out, you can douse those things in soya sauce and you are good to go. Or plum or, or red sauce if that's what you're into. I used to love as one of my choices at Manchu Wok the chicken wings, and then get a bunch of packets of soya and then just spread it all over. He's so, literally so saying, for an American listener, he's essentially saying he goes to get his wings at Panda Express. Sure. I, they yeah. have Manchu Walk in the States. I, don't think I, think so. they do. I see it I see it in airports. Oh. Right, maybe they do. Anyway, it's a food, it's a low-rent food court in it's the mall court, Chinese Chinese. Chinese. But the thing I, about, the thing about those them. chicken wings, though, is it's more breading than chicken wings, but it's not like good breading. Yeah. It's like when you get the chicken balls there, yeah. it's like this much of chicken, you get the chicken ball is this big. So Tim is just taking that and dumping liquid salt onto it and eating it. It's so good. Live your best life, friendo. Live, live in his truth. I'm telling you, you, right you, you don't need to eat like you did when you were six years old. You do know this. <laughs> I wish I had those wings right now. So can you please tell the people about the hot keys that you've recently discovered on your computer? So... Like a regular person, I know the basic hotkeys. Control C, that's to copy. Control V, that pastes. Control that's Z, it. use. I knew those. And Control B or I to make or U to italicize or underline or bold. I, I knew these. And I also, within the last year or two, learned that Control A highlights all the text on a screen. But I was playing around the other day and I saw the cut function. I'd actually never used cut before. 
for. Oh, I, thought, I, was, I, I thought you said the cuck function, but no, the cut function. Is That's just cut. what happens when you look in the mirror, pal. Tim and her cuck. <laughs> it says Control X. And so I was like, okay. So I go Control X and it deletes. And I was like, okay, but like, what's the purpose of this? Why would I use a cut function when I could just hit the delete button? So I started going on my phone and Googling to see why is there a cut? Why not just hit the uh, little to my knowledge? And I bet you this uh, from the responses I saw on Twitter, I was not the only one who didn't know this. Uh, it, when you cut through control X, it saves the thing you cut so you can paste it somewhere else. Now the, the whole, cut, now the whole cut and paste thing makes sense. I never understood why people used to say cut and paste instead of copy and paste, but it's because you can cut and save and then paste. So I learned that that was new. I also learned that control Y redoes something. So redoes something. Sorry. I mean, cause I knew control Z undid something and that was great, but sometimes you undid something you didn't mean to undo and you keep pushing control Z back and back and back and you get lost. That happens to me all the time, but control Y would bring it. So the, the so control X and control Y were, were life. And now I'm beginning to wonder what other ones don't I know about? What you other mean, control? You, you could just Google like you did the first time and find out the rest of them. Isn't it sort yeah. of like when you go to the restaurant and you're 30, you're in your mid thirties and you get introduced to a twice baked potato for the first time. It's sort of like the My same God, amazement. It's sort of like the same amazement, right? I, I like, where yes, has this I, been? I've been, I've been in this town. I've lived here my whole life. I, I've never I, experienced these I things. Think two things here. One, I like that Tim trying out new keys on the keyboard. Obviously someone told him because I don't think he had, he's into that kind of experimentation especially at work, trying out new hotkeys on his computer. But this really begs that they really should not have gotten rid of Clippy. I agree. I used to use Clippy. I know. I By did. the sounds of what you know about computers, it sounds like you use Clippy a lot. Why not? It would do it for me. It would tell you Why things. Why learn when it would do it for me? See, that's the thing. When Siri became your best friend, it really jettisoned Clippy to the side. I asked Siri to do all kinds of stuff for me. Like what? Like set my alarm. Turn on my flashlight. Turn off my flashlight. Call so and so. Bring up this for to text so and so. I do I use it all the time. Paul, wasn't Tim when he first discovered Sk Siri like terrified of Siri? No, not not That's Siri. Something that was Alexa. He's scared of Alexa. <laughs> okay, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's exactly the same thing. <laughs> no, that was a machine. That wasn't my phone. Uh, what do you think your phone is, Tim? Well, it's not the same time. I also like anyone that knows how to use Amazon, Tim considers proficient <laughs> at the internet. I'm not an Amazoner. I don't go on the Amazon Prime to buy stuff like you all. I don't know how it works. <laughs> I have received packages from Amazon. I know how to get them. I don't know how to send them. I don't know how to buy them. I'm just not an Amazoner. He knows how to open his door and pick a package. Thank you for bringing that up, it's Jeff. I wanted, I wanted that brought up. If it's delivered to me, I, I, I mean, do you think that he, do you, Tim, do you have to use like a safety knife when you open things? Like, are you trusted with a regular like exacto knife? Yes, I know what I'm doing. But yeah, I know how to accept <laughs> Amazon packages. I don't have the slightest clue how to make a purchase on the Amazon anymore. I tried it a couple of times and I heard horror stories and I completely, I even had an Amazon account and I heard horror stories from people about how bad experience they had. I canceled all my accounts. I never did another thing with Amazon. I refused. Greatest company in the world. Can you uh, can you tell us some Who's of these? Pay their taxes. Why do they got to pay their taxes? These are paying taxes. All those jobs go away, Jeff. Well said. You know what? The Amazon, the Amazon, as Tim calls it, wouldn't exist in America. It exists in Mexico. <laughs> so, but watch out what you ask for here. A lot of layoffs coming. You start making them pay the taxes because this thing right here, Jeff, means the taxes. Oh, I love I love Amazon. What were the horror stories that you had heard about Amazon? That yes, I, and, and okay. Also, before we get into that, on your resume when you go apply for jobs, is special skills listed as knowing how to get mail? <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> I realized after I said that that it sounded dumb, but I was just <laughs> going with it. No, nobody really made a point of it. <laughs> at That's least we're at, at least we're listening to you. Yeah, well, that's it. For me, Amazon's really a one-way street. I get. I don't get. I don't know how. Do you think listening to Tim has the same effects of, like, sucking helium out of balloons? <laughs> like, you lose just a few brain cells on every huff. It's not but quite... It's not like quite... Fun. 
you do have fun. You get the funny voice. That'd be the best impression you'd ever do. But like, it's not like huffing gas. Like, I th- I would feel like that's exponentially worse than just a little bit of helium. I don't know though. I'm not the doctor. Tim is. Oh, I love this. So Amazon horror stories. Let's hear them. I just people have told me that like. Amazon double and triple charges you and that you can't get your account functioning correctly. False. False. And, okay, this is the, these are the things I've been told. Wait, so hold, my, hold on. Is the person who told you these stories Brad Stoilov? No, no, no. Because if that was my, the case, he's an idiot and he wouldn't know no, how to use no, it either. No, 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 no. Random people that just... I, the did the people who like got, people, like people people who got to you? Did the people who got triple charged accidentally order it three times? No, it's like th- things got resolved, but it took time and Amazon wouldn't answer their phone calls. What is the median the age thing. of the person who got ripped off by Amazon? I, I, I don't know, in their 50s. <laughs> so just people don't know how to use the internet. I just got scared and I was like, not for me. <laughs> He's scared of the Amazon. The Amazon rules overall, Paul. Theory here. So Tim always supports like big box store and stuff. So he's probably just what, like seeing like fake news about Amazon because anybody who uses Amazon pretty much has like next to no problems with Amazon. I would go to an Amazon store physically. <laughs> that's, the that's the exact opposite of what they are. Oh, you go to Walmart? Yeah, I do. Of course I do. Yeah. I, <laughs> I went to go looking for those soda stream flavors this weekend. And they didn't have them? They had them, but they weren't very well displayed because, uh, again, they're advertised as water machines, not pop machines. Yeah, we actually did see this. Someone sent us a picture of a soda stream that said, like, soda water machine, but it was a real budget soda stream. So it wasn't the good okay, one. Okay, listen. It wasn't the Windsor Super System, system Saver He's like referred to like soda streams. A lot of their current commercial is all about how you save the environment because you're not, like, water bottling all day, mm-hmm. like buying yes. the plastic bottles. That, that, that's just like this campaign they're doing because, you know, being green is profitable and or faking it. I, whatever. I'm just saying that, like, yes, that's one, like, angle, and that's one angle that, like, is currently in their commercials. It's insane. It's SodaStream. I told him I was going to send him some for Christmas. Do you think he'd be able to figure that out? I'll, he can receive, remember? No, no, I don't mean getting the package. Actually oh, using actually, it. like, making it? Like, yeah. could he do an espresso? No, I, I think he can just do water. Like you put in the water, you put no, in. No, the... no, I can make the K cup coffees. Yeah, Is, are those the ones that you put? No, but when you have the flavors on Soda Stream, like you need to put in. Yeah, you put in like a pod. Yeah, you need the, yeah, like you need the pod, like the coffees. I just worry about that if, like, when the carbon goes down in a Soda Stream, he's not going to know how to replace it. It's just going to be gone. I know what. And he'll, to... he'll have to throw it out the window. <laughs> I know what to do. Do you? Yeah, you, you just bragged it. about knowing how to get mail. That's where the bar is now set. <laughs> I wish I hadn't said that. Uh, just take them to the store and then just get them replaced. Last thing. I want to throw this out here. It's a good controversial topic. Uh-oh. Ready? Yeah. It's not really controversial. So there's a beer, Tim, in our hometown, and I read about this on the internets today because people were very upset about it. There's a beer called Dirty Blonde. Shout out to them. I forget the name of the company that actually makes it. Nine Locks. Nine Locks, sure. So they have a flavor called Dirty Blonde. It's the name of their beer. And people are now protesting. And when I say people, I mean like people are making an internet stink that the beer is misogynistic because it's right. called Dirty Blonde. My advice to people out there is this is falling under the same category as all this Trump stuff. When you got mad when Trump wasn't really doing anything but making the biggest deal in the world out of it, that when he actually did something really bad, no one cared anymore, that is now what's happening. You're picking fights with stuff that doesn't matter. So when stuff actually matters and you want to pick a fight about it, people are going to tune out. That's all I wanted to say. I agree. Pick your battles on something that's meaningful. Because that's ridiculous. I Truly ridiculous. Remember you said people were protesting that restaurant in Toronto that had like elk or what was it? Uh, It The the, the place was called, yeah, vegans were protesting it every week. It was called Antler and like... You could go get fresh, like, game food. And it was, like, and it's not even, like, it was, like, processed, like, in captivity. It was, like, free-range, like, elk and stuff like that. It was sustainably killing animals. And they were going out and protesting. And all it did, the protest, was just make that place sell out every single night for... I think the guy went on the Joe Rogan podcast. It was the the best free advertising anyone ever got. I'm Probably great for Chick-fil-A in Toronto as well. Chick-fil-A... Paul, you tried to go to Chick-fil-A, and that's, what, four months after it opened? 
line up around when? the block at like eleven thirty in the morning. Like, like people, because I went last crazy. week around like two thirty. Swear to God, I walked right in. Really, two yeah. thirty is a pretty dead time though. Yeah, I, mi- I just missed the rush of like a horde good. of like school kids. But uh, not gonna lie, I don't, I don't really let politics get into those decisions because. If you're gonna no, like die on hill of corporations and what they do, it's like don't a slippery let politics, slope. Don't let politics infuse private life and non-public things. Live your life. Try not to let politics poison everything. Like I used to like like I have friends with like grandfathers that would like have heart attacks if their kids showed up in like a BMW or an Audi because it's a German car and the haul it like Yeah. I get like I know, get that. Yeah. I get it, like for a certain like generation, it's still very real. For sure. Um, for sure. But I'm just saying, like, you don't know. You could think, you know, things about companies that are in the news, but there's companies you love that if you did a deep dive into, I'm sure they donate to things you hate. Or, or the companies that you like and you look the other way, they're just they're the worst. Yeah. It's just yeah. easier to live your life and just enjoy the things you enjoy and worry about the important things. But my, my whole point on this isn't don't mix in politics with anything is like just pick something that's meaningful if you're gonna do don't it. cry wolf yeah if you start crying wolf the stuff that actually matters is gonna get overlooked and it's then it's completely defeated the point yeah if you get mad about everything the the things that are important seem less bad because everything is bad what's the difference yeah there's nothing the president can do that would be offensive now to people because he has been called the worst things for forever right the, there's no more shock value left yeah, and if people, I mean, it's hard to do because the media has deadlines to do. They want to get clicks. Oh, of course. So every single thing that he did ended up being the worst thing in the world instead of them just focusing on the worst stuff that he was doing. Yeah, yeah. one should try to keep one's powder dry. Yeah, really hammer home. It's like the big bets, Jeff. When you make the big bets, you got to wait for the right game and it comes along. You don't want to make the big bet on every game, whether you know or not. You want to have a good feeling. <laughs> I, I wasn't. I, I think something I had to share really was the uh, talk about the movie. What are you doing over there? And actually, the fact that I think Thanksgiving is an underexplored movie genre. I mean, Halloween and Christmas have all kinds of movies. In the United States, anyway, Thanksgiving is just as big a, if not bigger, a holiday than than anything by Christmas. And like, there's no movies about it. Like, what's up with that, Paul? I understand it. Tim, did you just move like ten feet away from your computer? No, I haven't moved an inch. It sounded like you opened a door. Are you having a cig right now? I am not. Are you sure? Because it, it sounds, sounds like, like, like you're like, opening doors. We can doors. hear you moving around. No, I'm, I'm in my recliner. Well, now it sounds like you're back close to the computer again. I didn't move. Jeff. Yeah, right. <laughs> that sounds suspicious. So you want more Thanksgiving movies? I do. I think it's an underexplored genre. I think you can make some really good ones. Like, do we have, you know how they have those, like, crappy Valentine's Day, like, the movie just, that's called, like, Valentine's Day. I think there's, like, a Christmas version of it where he's got a whole bunch of celebrities yeah, like together. New Year's Eve. Yeah, like, they're all just, they're all terrible, and they're all in the same movie. Like, is there no Thanksgiving version of that? Like, I'm just, just putting it into the Google machine right now. They consider funny people a Thanksgiving movie. I don't know about that. It's a good movie. Did anything else come up? So there's just two Thanksgiving movies? Uh, there's that. There is Paul Blart Mall Cop for some reason. Uh, these are all terrible, except for planes, trains, and automobiles. Well, I, I listen based on you loving network TV shows. I'm shocked you're not a fan of Paul Blart Mall Cop one, two, or three. <laughs> <laughs> is there a third? I assume I so. If there was a second one, there's definitely a third one, even if it was direct to demand. I just don't I, I don't understand why there aren't great movies about the Thanksgiving holiday. It's just it's strange to me. Do you think you have to have home cooked meals on Thanksgiving? Have to? No, but it's better. I mean, there are some. Why, why is why is it better? Let's say you were in charge of cooking. Wouldn't I be better off buying the stuff? No, I would put time and effort into it and cook a great meal. But you can't how cook. Hard, you would try to how, microwave a turkey. No, no. How hard would it be to bake a turkey? Oh my god! I mean, you just 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 shove her in the oven and put it on the right temperature per pound. You're good to go. I think there are YouTube videos. I will put it this way: Listen, I I rented an Airbnb over Christmas time. I, I can film you trying to cook a turkey. Sure, let's do that. Oh boy, this is gonna. Be let's fun. do that. T- Tim's do Tim's 
cuisine with Tim as he tries to make all these meals he says are incredibly I'll easy. Of, I'll make stuffing. I will make potatoes. I will make uh, sweet potatoes. I'll make uh, the, the best vegetable at Thanksgiving, which in my opinion is Brussels sprouts. Very <laughs> underappreciated Thanksgiving. It's the green on your plate, right? A lot of people, although it's weird. I guess there's a part of the United States where salad is a very common side dish at a turkey dinner. That's very strange. I've never seen that. Uh, certainly where I, I just, I can't imagine it, which would be very strange. to have like a, oh, here's a bowl of like garden salad to go with your turkey. It blows my mind. But you need some green on your plate to, to go with the potatoes and the gravy and the stuffing and the meat and the carrots. My plate would be just turkey, mashed potatoes, gravy, and biscuits. There'd be nothing green on my no plate. No stuffing? No carrots? Stuffing's the best part of it. Yeah, like the carrots might come like, they're sort of like in... Like surrounding the turkey. Well, I know like Levy is out on Thanksgiving, and there's a lot of people out on Thanksgiving because they hate turkey. I, for one, do not love hate it. turkey. I, love I have turkey, turkey all the turkey time. It's yeah. delicious. Love turkey. Dark meat's better than white meat, but it's both good. And uh, yeah, and like I said dressing's the best part of the meal if it's inside the bird. And dessert's great too. Love it all. And wish I wish I was going to some American feast. Paul? How's Tim gonna make this uh, this feast all in the microwave? I don't know. Like, I don't I'm think not, you can make Brussels sprouts in the microwave. I make a Brussels sprout where I boil it quickly and take it out and then cut it in half and then I fry it so that I blacken it on the bottoms. Uh, it's excellent. You don't have you don't like have like bacon in with your Brussels sprouts. I mean, who likes Brussels sprouts? If there's no I like bacon the taste, with them, I like the strong taste of like the cabbagey Brussels sprout. I think it's delicious. Uh, it's amongst, if I were to rank vegetables, it would be very high in the vegetable rank. Tim really? being in on Brussels sprouts is probably the least surprising thing I've ever heard. I know, they're pretty healthy. They are. Well, I actually they're enjoy they're them, but... And delicious. I'm big. I'm much bigger. Jeff, maybe you can, you can speak to this. Roasted Brussels sprouts versus roasted broccoli. I would say it's broccoli. Broccoli. Broccoli, oh, for sure. Broccoli. With a little, like, of uh, the, uh, like, vinaigrette or something, and then you put it drizzle it and then you put it in the oven yeah yeah yeah, yeah. maybe you put some garlic on that yeah, yeah it'll be good to go That's, yeah whatever my wife I'm not does a roast, i'm not a roast person for the vegetables i like to boil them quickly Gross. blanch them well we've already established you have no taste buds so that doesn't surprise me <laughs> no do you, I like also, to, do, you, do you also prefer boiled potatoes as your favorite kind of potato no i went out to a restaurant a couple weeks ago and there was this thing they had called a double baked potato. And so what they did, right, was they baked the potato. Tim, Tim, you're not breaking news to anyone listening. This to is, this. I'd never heard of this. You <laughs> are literally like, the you're the last person on earth to figure I, this I out. I swear to God, we are, he is like Encino Man. <laughs> and that is what people think. That is what people think. Oh, uh, Tim, 96% of people listening have been to normal restaurants, have been to... This is like a mid-level steakhouse, right? That like you would get this at like a mid-tier steakhouse yeah, to have it this. Was, it was the keg. I assume Outback has it. That's what I mean. Most places have Tim, double- The keg has had that for 50 freaking years. Well, I have never had this before. And I didn't even like I was strongly suggested to get it and try it. It was the best thing I had there all evening. It was delicious. I think I, that really, I, I think that should really speak to the quality of their steak, oh, by the, the steak way. Is, I I don't it's, mind it's, the keg. No. Listen. No, if he's saying that the potato is better than the steak, then there's oh. a problem with the steak. The potato was mind blowing. It's like I've never heard of this, and like I'd like to have this. Again. Like that is the best way to have potato now. No, no, I sorry, I take this back. You could get like this. They would do this for you at like Applebee's yeah. or like Fridays. I, I take back like no, like mid level. No, no, that's it's just like where he saw it. Yeah. Like restaurant with twice bait revelations. <laughs> Control Alt Delete this guy. Oh, Paul. Sorry, just one la- one last little thing to add. Tim knows that when he boils whatever vegetables he's going to have before cooking, he literally just strips it of any sort of nutritional value if that he was actually going to get. If you boil it for long, yes. If, if you, you boil just, any vegetables, you're just literally taking for 30 away 30 seconds, nutrients. 45 seconds? No, that's not true. You as long bo- as they're still firm and crispy, if you only have them in there for like 35 to 40 seconds so that they're hot but they're still firm, you haven't killed all the nutrients. Okay, I thought you were turning this stuff into mush. No, no, no. Of course not. That that's awful. That's like old fashioned cooking. I don't care for that. Just like it's like a blanching, a very quick in that hot boil for thirty to forty five seconds and out. Two other things. One, Jeff, tell us what you told Tim and I about McDonald's before we came on air. 
about how you just walk. No, that you could just you order on the app, and then they send it the second you pull into the like parking lot. It senses you're like in their range, and your order goes to the kitchen. And you park your car, and you're like third in line not to place your order to receive your food. Well, it's like well, it's like. Because their Wi-Fi, like I just know. What, what, what do you mean? How do they range. know? You have fucking GPS on your phone, you tool. And yeah, how does know? Because they have the. Because you do it through their and app, and then it goes onto their screen. Like the guy in the back, see, like it, it pops up in a queue of all the orders and oh, ahead of anyone know. in line. And then no, I walk I, in. The line is like seven people deep, and they're all ordering, and I'm like third in queue to get my food. Ben I hate Ronald this. is watching. <laughs> I hate this. You should have to stand in line with everybody else at the same. It's a, it's, it's a communal experience. These things should not be segregated according to experience. They should be everybody. When they go to a baseball game, everyone gets rained on. And you know what? When the Raptors hit 12 threes, I get free French fries on my mobile order. (laughs) Everybody should have to, it should be first come first serve. Whoever gets there first, puts their order in, gets served first. That's the way it ought to be. There's something like community building about that type of it. I actually, you know? but 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 Jeff has technically ordered before these people. Yes, and but I do have one real beef that kind of goes to where Tim's saying, but I think ahead of where he is. Okay, in that I'm talking about the mobile ordering through like the restaurant's app, so it goes directly to them. Okay, but now you see it like the checkouts at a lot of these places or where you order, like I, like a fast food. I they have I the, order McDonald's off of Uber Eats, okay, and they just deliver it to me. So now I'm going to say this because these are the people I have the beef with. Okay, I'm in line when I am standing in line like a normal human, or you see, um, why would you stand in line when you can just use that machine that's there, and then you don't have to wait in the line. Here's the thing. Machine doesn't like customize is it the way I want. Yeah, well, you're, yeah, you're, you're I, too fancy with your order at McDonald's and no. you can't register it. Do you want to know something? Someone? I don't want to. You want you? We have to go there now. Yeah, let's do this. God damn it! Sometimes I need like extreme customization, and what I mean I'm by that well. is I love the genericness of uh, just a normal McDonald's cheeseburger on those like literally it's like cake those buns. Now McDonald's in this new thing that their burgers are hotter and fresher. Oh, I I personally love a coagulated. I'm not talking about like a deep quag, but like a good half hour quag on a Duke's cheeseburger. Yes. Holy shit. That is the most right thing in the world. I agree. Sorry. We all got our happy places, bro. And that's one of them. I'm with Jeff. Now they do this hotter, fresher thing and they like cook it like with onions. I'm not into. I don't like onions. I like onions. Don't taste like anything. Okay, hold by the way. hold on. Yes, I they like. No, they, don't. I they like, enhance the flavor of sorry, whatever else you're. I eating. I want to finish what I'm saying. Like, if my wife is cooking, like, I, you can like cook with onions, but I don't want like onions on my like a topping or okay. something. Or if it's in a dish, I'm happy to like keep it because I do know it does add flavor to the sauces and the dishes, and I'm pro flavor. But they put these like little so chopped weird. onions now that aren't like onions like with the order. Like you could say, I just want a plain cheeseburger, but the burgers now still have these like little bits of onion in them because that's how they're cooking them. And I, I don't like that. And it onion. really okay. annoys okay. me. Okay. And that Nothing little Duke's cheeseburger was my Tim's happy Tim's trying to talk over you. That little Duke's cheeseburger was my happy place and they ruined it. I thought they always had the little onions on them. No, that's always. just a normal topping. Hopefully people understand what I'm saying. But if you look into how they're now cooking their hamburgers, I'm not into hot or fresher. So, I'm not <laughs> Agreed. You I'm made me go down this goddamn rabbit hole. So when my original complaint was, I don't like when I'm in line and the Uber button goes off, beep goes off, and she now is stopping serving the customer directly in front of her and inputting yeah. your order. Yeah, because I've already ordered. You haven't. No, it's beeping. So it hasn't gone in yet. No, because because I have pressed no, send. It's gone in through I've, their intermarry. It, their, the, the I, third I party have, from vendor. my phone. I've already ordered. So my, yes. I'm up next. Uber has. You have given Uber your order. Uber is now relaying your order to McDonald's. Correct. I'm in McDonald's. I don't Correct. Care. <laughs> I'm at home. <laughs> so in this situation, you're the sucker. I know. I'm not debating <laughs> who's the sucker. I'm just saying I don't small. like it. They should serve the people there before they acknowledge no. people who aren't there. No, absolutely not. 
If I ran a fast food chain, there'd be none of this. You come in, <laughs> you stand in line, you order, you get served in the he order would, in which you order. That's he'd be out it. of business because the rest of the fast foods are taking the Uber money, despite Uber, you know, taking their yeah. 20 or 30 percent. But it's There's still a lot like, of people who would say that's the way I like a business run right there. And I will patronize that business. Because I respect that business. More. Yeah, we, we've seen that a lot when, you know, giant corporations come into small towns and put everyone else, else out of business. Because, you know, people are very loyal to the places that they go and keep them in business, Tim. I believe in loyalty. On a totally separate food. One sec. No, I have a food thing about onions. Right. So we have a friend. He's uh, 34 years old. He still lives in there. <laughs> Tim? No, it's not Tim. <laughs> um, and his mom makes, like, tacos for the family. Taco night. Love it. Taco night. Taco night is fantastic, but she cooks the ground beef with chopped up onions in it. But he doesn't eat vegetables. If vegetable is on his plate, he won't eat his meal. He's 34. <laughs> and so they pile everything in. Like they, they cook the ground beef with yeah. the onions in it. And then his mom goes through and takes all the onions out oh, for dude. his ground beef. <laughs> How awesome is that? What service? You wouldn't get that kind of service at Tim's fast food restaurant. No. Here, here's... Yeah. I don't know. See, I went on we my thing that I'm anti-onion, but someone who's making like a true homemade like burger patty, I know the onions got to be in there and you don't even taste them. We yeah, These little Dukes ones, I'm telling you. And I'm not talking about the onions that like when you order onions on your hamburger. No, I, people understand what you're talking okay, about. I'm you're just, just like arguing with Tim, who's a maniac. Who, no, I just wanted to go circle back to Jeff's point that sometimes he needs extreme customization. <laughs> Okay. So what's your most customizable thing when you go to a fast food place? Yeah, Jeff, what's the extreme customization? I just told you. I, 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 I don't, he just told us. I was asking you. That I don't want, like, even the onion pressed oh. in on, like, the grill. I like my hamburger done like a Mac sometimes. No. That's no, not that's, extreme. That, that's you, like, you can order that off the machine. Dude. No, that, that's, that is an option. Okay, yes, yes, it is. Yes, you 100% no. can. And literally, no. have you no. ever... You could. They've taken that functionality out of the terminals now. They have. Tim, Believe the last time we talked, you said you couldn't figure out how to use the terminal. No, no, I no, guarantee you on the app, I could add like Mac sauce to a regular I'm not saying the app. I'm saying the terminal inside the restaurant. The restaurant? Anyway, uh, again, this is much like his twice baked. He's like this revelation where you know how many times you're I also at like to add pickles on the junior chicken and you can't do that on the terminal. You have to ask in person. I'm pretty anti pickle. Oh, pickles are delicious. Good for you too. Are they good for you? They've got to be. They're vegetable. When you, is it just like your thing when you say that like diet coke is good for you? Yeah, it's all a sliding scale. So, of the not, topics so, so things that are not good for you on your sliding scale are now good for you. I'm just saying I like them. I think they're good. I guess my customization isn't, isn't as extreme. I don't demand fresh fries every time I go through the drive. That that is the sneaky best thing that you can do. You say uh, no salt. You say well done. You just put a twist now, on it. We we have another friend who demands fresh fries every time that it goes through, and I'm not going to lie to you. His fries always fresh, way crispier, okay. way better. It really depends on the. You don't want the soggy. It fry. depends on. The, I walk into McDonald's and it's barren. I know I got to maybe make an instruction. No salt. Well done. In high volume time. In a high volume time, you see that fryer's going, you know you're going to get Sure, but you goods. don't know that at the drive through Fair enough. There's but nothing I like week? more than being in line at Duke's and seeing a guy in front of me order two supersized fries. Clear out that tray, buddy. Sorry, man. You... Fat guy takes. What do you want from me? <laughs> you get fresh fries, though. They make you wait. You have to park one of those parking spots. And wait yeah, for them to because, because they're, making they're making you fresh yeah, fries. they're making you fresh yeah, fries. And what like are you that. waiting, like 200 really seconds? It really annoys me when I have to wait and get out of line. Okay, hold on. So your take around all of this is you don't think you should be able to order from the app that you have to stand in line to get your order, but you refuse to wait for your order at any time. No, no, I don't mind waiting. I just don't like the person behind me who ordered after me getting theirs before I get mine. I order first, I get mine first. That's the way it should work. Yeah, I don't you, care if I have to wait there you, for 10 minutes. The person behind me will just have to wait because see, I can't. In, that is literally crazy. Like if you order something that they're just still making and someone else's is ready because there's like four people back there. 
doesn't take all four of them to make your mac sauce hamburger, dude. I know, but sometimes it takes a while. Oh, Paul wants to say something. Paul? So wait a second. <laughs> so you order, say you order a Big Mac meal. The guy behind you orders, orders a coffee. You're saying that you need to get your food before that guy's coffee? It takes them two seconds to make a coffee. But I ordered first. You're but, oh, but here's the thing. They also literally customer. at the modern McDonald's, they have a woman like working the coffee. It can be a man. So, <laughs> no, no, you're absolutely <laughs> right. No, no, I take that back. They have like somebody working, working that area. They're it's not even involved in the back. Just to make sure everything is but going. But I ordered first, Jeff. Me, I don't me, 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 me. Such I don't really care at the counter inside, but I care at the drive through I've been meaning to ask you. Me. And I meant to do this off air because it's so irrelevant. But if you hit <laughs> up that fresh, that new uh, uh, summer hill up the street from you. No, I don't even know what that is. I don't know what a summer hill is. Yeah, I don't know what a summer hill is either. It's a little like market that's like in my neighborhood that I like. I saw that. Your neighborhood is a good like 20 minute drive from me. But no, but it's up the street from you. They built one right beside your house now, I feel. Or where you live. Really? I haven't noticed this. It's been cold, so I haven't been walking around as much. And I rarely go north from my front door. I always go south. Okay, but it's like a block and a half north. Like up by Castle Loma? Like Castle no, Loma is a before block. before that. Before that. You may have a different I, I don't think that this is by me. <laughs> I did have one uh, thing for you, Jeff, to start off with. Oh, God. No, it's nothing crazy. I bring my son to daycare now. Very pricey daycare, because apparently there is no cheap daycare, as yeah. I found out. It's not. It's not good. It's all. So I try to get them. There, I try to get him there as early as possible, so I can really max out my value on yeah. the daycare. But they have this dog that wears a yarmulke and has like the menorah type. It's like a, a Jewish themed dog, like for to Hanukkah a toy. Season. Yeah, it's a toy, and you play it, and it like dances around. My son loves it. Do you? Are there more of these things? Do you have any at your house that I can just have for my house because it calms him down? I uh, don't. He just sits there and goes like this. <laughs> um, I I don't know. I guess they have to. Uh, they have like decorations of all religions. I guess right for it, the holidays. Yeah, they, everything yeah. is there. It's sort of like the Billy the Loudmouth Bass, but for holidays. yeah. I was gonna say yeah. There's <laughs> yeah that you see that stuff all the time now, like dancing like snowmen or. Do you think the snowmen say "Take me to the river"? <laughs> <laughs> hey Tim, throw me in the water. I didn't know that was a real song until I heard it Why one time. Snowman want that? No, you would melt. How early do they let you take the kit? Like, because I I'm eight, about that too. Eight a.m. is that when it opens? And here's the fun thing: so five is when they close, and you get charged five dollars per minute for every minute that you're late picking them up after five for the first 10 minutes. Then it's $10 per minute after the first 10 minutes. They're not fucking And after around. that 20 minutes, $25 per minute. I mean, they should give you to like 5.05 before they put you on. The no, clock. you're on the clock. I like it. Wow. They want to get out of there. I guess so, but they don't have like, um, like, at, at, at um, like my kids, like there's like, you would have to pay for it, but there's like a late, um, there is not at this like place. a uh, aftercare hour care thing, and you could like like you don't do it every day, but I'm running late today. Like, can you put her in aftercare, yeah. and they would charge you at, at this place? I don't believe that there is, but yeah, it's, that's a, but a, it's so close to our house, we got to do it. Yeah, of course, that meter is running. Yeah, you got to. I guess good. Geez, you, you can get away with that shit here, especially in this city. And you're right; it's it's, it's outrageous. And just we had to put him in three months early to get a spot. Oh, it's, they're, they're just like you can have a spot now, or you might not have a spot by the time you dude, want to actually put such, it. It's such, it's such criminal. The fear mongering in like the child industry is out of this world. What was I saying? I because Paul and I were talking like rent versus childcare. I pay more than two times what Paul pays in rent for someone to watch my child for seven hours. It's ridiculous. It is. I'm not surprised to hear that one bit because I know where you live. Yeah. And there's no other option. The there's no, cheap, the there's no cheap option is the thing. None. That sucks. Tim, hit me with your... You have a good one today. At least I believe it's going to be good. Yeah, I thought instead of doing a list per se this week, I thought I would give the people some advice. 
uh, as their tribune. I think that's part of me giving back in the holidays and that's giving some tips and pointers about how to throw a good holiday party, a Christmas party, whatever you're celebrating. I think I can provide you have having been to many parties. And is he an award winning host? He bought himself a trophy. That yeah. is true. For a summer party. Self-proclaimed best party yeah, thrower. Best party, <laughs> best party ever. That's what people are saying. He's not He's not the Aussie sunglasses guy. He's not famous like that guy. Paul, yes. Do people, do people know that clip, by the way? I had this debate like two months ago with someone. No, they don't. That. Paul. People know that. I said they did. Just a quick question. Just a quick question, Tim. Um, is this for alcohol parties or all parties? Like, what, what parties are we talking about? Are they all covered under the same roof, or is this for non-alcohol parties? That's really only a term that makes sense in, like, high school, when I, many of the parties I are think not the pe- alcohol school. Pe- viewers of this alcohol. show know the reference. People who get this deep into the episode definitely understand no, no, the alcohol parties that, reference. Okay, but I'm just saying an alcohol party only really makes sense as a concept when you're in high school, when you can't actually buy or consume alcohol. After... You know, people are 19 or 21. Then all parties, I think, are relatively assumed to be uh, an alcohol set. I, I will. But. I will say that based on my experience, you can consume alcohol in high school. Well, yes, you can. Throwing that out there. The majority of the parties that I went to, there, there certainly was no alcohol or involved. That that's for sure. Oh, before you get into your Christmas party tips. Uh, there was another one-star review because I go through the the iTunes reviews so I can draw the winners of the sixty DK bucks, and there was one on there that gave us one star tip, uh, based on me because I said that you know, everyone who lives on the east coast of Canada is an alcoholic, and they took real issue with that, giving me one star. But there was I counted it up. There was I believe fifty-seven words in the review, and seventeen of them were spelled incorrectly. I think the person was drunk. Or that's a pretty pretty good batting average for them. Yeah. And I mean, I, they were like, you need to apologize. I will not apologize for a joke I'm going to make from a place where I'm from. And Tim currently lives. Tim, everyone can't be an alcoholic on the East Coast of Canada because you live there. You're not an alcoholic. That's right. I wouldn't call myself a teetotaler, but I very rarely <laughs> consume alcohol. Uh, I, was, I do want to what, what I will throw out based on statistics is that it's almost double the average of like... North American alcoholism exists on the East Coast of Canada. Sure, but we probably have more universities per capita than most places in North America, and so that's a contributing factor. And nothing to do. That helps, too. Well, there's nice, always nice things to do indoors. Yeah, like drinking. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what the people do. <laughs> well, some people do. Here, so here are some, some tips. If you're going to have a party, first and foremost, I do not care for the ugly sweater parties. They they were interesting and cool. For you a wear while. ugly sweaters 365 days a year. They were cool and interesting, like when they began, but they sort of gotten tired. And now, I'm of the opinion: if you're having a Christmas party, it needs to be formal. You should be telling oh people God. to show up dressed nicely. Do not show up to someone's Christmas party in a t-shirt and a pair of blue jeans. Uh, that that I'm sorry, you shouldn't do that. Wear some, preferably wear a tie. Uh, wear some nice pants. I think you should probably Slacks. wear a jacket. If you don't, yes, definitely slacks. You don't wear a tie with jeans. Uh, you know, c- come on now. This, I know that might be cool at TIFF. Uh, that might be what everyone's doing when they walk around the CNE while they eat their fancy foods instead of going to perfectly good restaurants like Subway. That's, That's a so fancy, man. Yeah. So fancy. So at the fancy. CNE where Jim, everyone gets Jim sick Bono every like year from like low food top. quality. I, my vision of CNE is like all these fancy tasters or like people are eating their all so, so you have no idea what goes on there for you people. literally uh, listen i want pat to invite me back so i'm not going to explain the cne to you it's literally a fair he's <laughs> saying fair food is yeah. fancy for if the people who are not from the fair. toronto area yeah like a lot of the people there are the nut low <laughs> people literally so my, my, get sick love, there we every love single year so much that we will this is like the type of you're, oh my God! You're trying to park, and you see the minivan in front of you, and like 17 people hop out of it. <laughs> That's Tim oh, And they're all, yeah, and they're all got finely trimmed mustaches and hipster glasses that are hey, well, even that, that yeah. don't even have prescriptions. They just look good. That's not well, the that, ex- that, that, no, no, that, no, no. That, Tim is agreeing with you because he doesn't know and not doesn't realize you're being sarcastic. <laughs> Just, You're being sarcastic. Uh, I like your takes, but how do you how do you confuse the 
the the fair with oh i just assume it's this fancy taste test for toronto foodies sort of like that's what i imagine seeing it's there. an outdoor fair like the building that they hold it in is probably going to be condemned in the next five years like this is like the <laughs> lowest like it's so bad there's 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 yeah winslow have okay. you ever been it's, to the cne like tim car, it's a carny fest yeah. i don't understand we, we went we went to it one time tim and i and we went to the casino and it was the single like most low budget casino on earth the, the dealers didn't know the rules of the games that they were dealing. Okay, that's fair. I never went to the food stuff, so I'll, I'll take your point that I that I misconstrued. And there was that. a guy who looked like J.P. Aaron Sebia who was standing behind us, who was trying to bet on our friend, our other Listen, friend Tim's stuff. All I'll say table. is I'm at this place. Me and my wife have a great time. It's just maybe it's more of like an annual traditional thing, like for us locals. Then I don't know if I'm actually having a great time, but I, we good. We have fun. But my head is on a swivel the whole time. Yeah, you don't want to get shanked. Yeah, and I am. Do- and, and anytime we go, we're documenting for the group chat because you see some shit. <laughs> okay, but it's the fanciest place on earth, according to Tim. Anyway, my point was before I perhaps I misstated things, but the CNE. Although I think it's still probably more hipster than you're willing to give it credit. Uh, <laughs> the uh, you should have a relatively formal or semi-formal dress uh, at a uh, at a a party or ho- if you're especially if you're hosting but even if it's not you know you should dress nicely it's christmas time you should should dress nicely don't show up in a in a t-shirt that's I, that's bad i completely disagree i like showing up in, in a t-shirt so people can see my guns gotta show that off you don't work out for no reason not to show it off Jeff. Christmas Every, time, er, everyone form. knows that new when year's you're new, per- shut up new year's eve is more the time of what you're talking about than like christmas time because everyone's just like everyone's off work everyone's like kind of chilling around christmas time like people show up in like fucking sweatpants see I, just, I, like, I actually chill out. I, I would argue it's the complete different like new year's eve to me would be like the sweatpants no new year's, eve, you want, new year's eve if you're gonna go like formal like, for anything i would say that like hey it's new year's i wouldn't put on tux or anything like that what tim is no. describing sounds like he would show up dressed like Will Ferrell and John C. Riley and Step Brothers going to interviews wearing like a tuxedo T-shirt. No, I wouldn't. Uh, my next point was that when it's time to serve food, serve normal Christmas food. Nobody wants to go to your party and try this weird new recipe that you saw on the Yelp. They want to see real stuff. They want the regular stuff. They want your fruit cake. They want your bacon wrap scallops. They want your sa- oh, you're laughing at me. What did I do wrong? What the- you know, people not like fruitcake and like bacon wrap scallops and uh, you know like meats and cheeses and like your tr- <laughs> the Yelp <laughs> the Yelp whatever right? nobody, nobody wants your recipe, food from the Yelp. the Yelp whatever like food <laughs> recipes people are getting off of the internet I don't know what they do. I, I, anyway, my point was that people don't want these fancy, weird, oh, I just saw this on Facebook uh, to make this thing. No, people don't want that. People want your traditional stuff that they know and they're used to. Uh, you know, that, I'm sorry. That's what I like, too. That's what I like. You should have the normal stuff that you'd have at a party. So you just want like uh, piggy in a blanket like from a box. Yeah, yeah that's great. Chips and dip. Uh, you know, a meat and cheese tray. Uh, you know, like I said, fruitcake, cookies, candy, hot chocolate beers wines like i said bacon wrap scallops ba- bacon wrap potatoes if I mean, i've had those at places they're, would they're you pretty- suggest oh, hold on paul so let me get this right tim wants us to dress up to go to a homeless party yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta wear your tux you don't have your chips and dip how is Re- this homeless this is tim tim, tim remember you gotta go to the gas station to get the ruffles dip before you show up to our classy affair this affair ruffles is going to be very classy that's what people say. Ruffles makes this spinach dip, which is out of this world good. I tell you, it, it's amazing. Like that, that would be at my, uh, at, at my, my meal. You uh, would cheese, fit right in at the X, ball, by the way. A cheese ball. You definitely should have one of those too if you you can get one. Regular, you know, people don't want wacky off the wall weird stuff. When okay, they go to these give parties. me, they please give us exa- please give us examples of wacky off the wall stuff. Oh, you know, and if you see that on Facebook all the time, where people give like, give us specific examples. What's please. the dish? Oh. What's, the, what's the appetizer? I this is, for some reason this darn thing in my Twitter feed that keeps you know, Philadelphia cream cheese keeps like recommending how to make like snowmen out of like cream cheese and stuff. And I was like, I don't want that. Why is this even in my feed? So I click on it to figure out why am I getting this? And like, I keep getting it. It's very annoying. 
this kind of stuff really aggravates me. I don't understand why I have to get all this weird new stuff. All I want is the regular stuff. So that at my, I think that's what you should do at your Christmas parties too. That way your guests know what they're getting. You haven't said also, anything. Yeah, you, you, you haven't given an example. Like yet. Philadelphia cream cheese has commercials about like bake, like whatever it's for it, icing like, or cheesecakes. Or, yeah, like, or, and, like, and, and, like and also the reason that you're getting these ads is because you keep clicking on them. You know that, right? No, but I'm clicking on them to get rid of them. <laughs> what does that even mean? Like, you can click on ads to say, like, why am I getting this ad to, like, stop getting ads? Yeah. when you, The moment you click on it, that means you have engaged with it, which means you're going to get even more of that exact same type of ad. I don't how know. do you not I'm, know how the internet works? I'm trying to click on, like, why are you seeing this ad so I can get rid of this ad? Just so block, block, block the account. That's what you do. And Oh, that's a good idea. Uh... <laughs> Anyway, also, so you have not given any specific examples of this fancy food, and you want people to show up and like go to the also, supermarket and buy a thing of nope. like the, the wheel Pat. of cheese and bring it over. Or, just, like, hold on, hold on. How about, also, how about you just have like a nice charcuterie board? You can have your meats, you, you can have your cheeses, you can have your breads. How I fan- mentioned that. How fancy? No, you talk. No, that, that is you did not mention a charcuterie board. How fancy? Yeah, do that's you not, think? That, but no, the board would be too fancy for you. You want them to show up with the plastic wheel with the cheese in like the blocks so you can pick it out plastic, and eat it. Yeah, or the plastic container full of vegetables. I, I think that, or a fruit tray. That's a can't miss comedy. If it's going to be a classy affair like you're talking about, why don't you put some spreads out with nice cheeses properly, even soft cheeses that you can put out and mix with different like rabbit meat mm-hmm. and that kind I of thing. Like, I don't like soft So re- really, you're just giving us tips for a party that you want to go to that no one else likes. Well, I just think this is traditional stuff. That I'm also people. curious, how fancy... Could Philadelphia cream cheese be telling you to like do something? Oh, like they want you to make like these snowmen out of like a Philadelphia cream cheese mixture. I, I don't know. Like, and you see on Facebook, and if you don't. Oh my know, God. So, what are they I, like? I, I don't get these ads targeted at me, unfortunately. Like, oh, here's how to make this like Christmas style cupcake. Here's how to make this can't miss seven layers. I know there's like a word for it, but like s- visual, like, I don't know. They want fun kids treats for the holidays like why are you try I want the things I grew up with and that I know and that's what people want when they go to these holiday parties they want to know what they're getting they don't want to be surprised they may not come they may not have eaten You didn't ex- it seems well, like you've never on, been out so what do you know Yeah Paul has a question Maybe we can dig it out of him this way When was the last time that you were at a party Tim and you were just like you know what that hors d'oeuvre I don't want that at my party cuz you're not really giving us much here I mean, I've had hors d'oeuvres in the past that I that I just didn't care for. Can you just give us a fucking example of one? Just give us one. I don't know. Like, <laughs> there's stuff. I can't remember it off the top of my head. I just being member not liking things that I saw. I can't remember what it was, but just the feeling that I had. And I'm trying to alleviate that that feeling. It sounds, like other tip, it sounds like you're living your truth. The other tip I wanted to raise is that you should organize to have games at your party. Traditional games. I'm talking Pictionary. I'm talking, uh, you know, like table games, uh, card games. Those are fun. People like those. people like, are at the party? Like, Six you're, people? Like you're, you're hiring a fucking blackjack dealer for your party? I'd be in on that, by the way. No, no. Like, remember, we went to a Christmas party once where we played Pictionary, and that was a lot of fun. Yes, I do. I do remember. No, that. It can be. A lot it, of was, fun. it was. It was only fun because we went to like. It wasn't even really a Christmas party. It was like so we went to a friend's house around Christmas and his. It was parents, Christmas night. And it, was it Christmas night? It was Christmas night. May, I looked may, it up in my journal. May, my journal. Who are you, Kavanaugh? <laughs> Tim would love to be Kavanaugh. <laughs> he was. That That's was. A, a personal hero of his, but. <laughs> the the two things that stick out from that night was my wife was legitimately triggered over two things. One, the guy there was the the host of the party was just ranting and raving about climate change, not real, not a real thing. Right. That was pretty fun. And then I was just kept egging him on. Tim agreed with him. And then the <laughs> to get a word in it wasn't Pictionary. It was like uh, categories. It wasn't categories. What's where you say the thing and you have to get them like you say one word and you have to get them to say the word. Oh, yeah. It was like a catchphrase. Yeah, catchphrase. So we're playing that. <laughs> and the the wife of the guy said, the answer was nurse. And her Correct. clue was female doctor. And the guy instantly went nurse. <laughs> and my wife was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> she she didn't not- react to CBC. That's what his card was for picture or for charades. 
He had to play charades and it was at, act out the CBC. <laughs> Think about that, how you would do that. Mm, I, I don't know. Anyway, we also played a game like that once and but, but, somehow but, the clue, the answer was Al Pacino and the clue was given, you looking at me? You looking <laughs> at me? And the person instantly said Al Pacino and not Robert De Niro got it right. How does that happen? How do you fuck up the impression for the wrong person, but the other person guesses wrong anyway? It's that like is Len- like next level stuff. Yeah, it's like when Lenny used the word concur okay. correctly. Here's the when thing. Calendars would conquer. To play these games, you would have to have more of like a dinner party than a party. Yeah, I agree. Because like you're like, you it's like, like six, six to 12 people, 10 people kind of, eight people. Um, no, because it's always a group But if you have a party, there's like 25 people. They're walking around. They're mingling. Like it's kind of hard and you like start a game and it's like, I don't, I don't know. Question. We'll just have some beer pong or some at like your other party, game. Is there, is there, at, at your party, is there one bathroom that's dedicated for people doing drugs? No, it's Christmas Your party time. sounds it's... fucking lame, man. No, it's <laughs> elegant. It's not. You, you want people to dress up and eat the lowest forms of food and then play no, Pictionary. Not, well, can I say... They are, Tim, you're incredibly low. How have you no, not figured I'm this not. out? I'll say this. I love Christmas. I love it. I love it. It's such an awesome holiday. Because you get to go to fucking the Chinese buffet on Christmas Day. No, I just I just like all that it's about. I'm anti the war on Christmas. People should be able to say it, nope. sing it. Christmas canceled. Like That's what I heard. I, I kind of do believe that's like a real thing. And as someone who doesn't celebrate it, anyone, I want it to ha, be celebrated. Have you ever heard anyone in your real life be anti-Christmas ever? The answer is no. That doesn't exist. No, I remember but, several years ago when Mel Lastman, who was the mayor of Toronto, fought the city council who wanted to call the tree a holiday tree. Mel Lastman said, it's a Christmas tree. What's wrong with you people? Yeah, and Mel Lastman's a Jew. Yeah, and Mel Lastman's like, it's called a Christmas tree. He had no time for that sort of war on Christmas. Was Mel Lastman also the one who made those controversial remarks about, yes, about the Mel, Africa? Yes, the, when the Toronto was trying to get, to get the Olympics. The Olympics. Yeah. yeah. Not a great look, Mel. No, Mel's had some weird stand. There's like an illegitimate son. But uh, so you know, the bad boys. So Tim has doesn't want fancy hors d'oeuvres at his Christmas party or crazy ones, oh, well, but, he can't, but, he, but he can't. But he can't actually name one. What about like mini grilled cheese? Is that like that fancy? Sounds, that sounds it's delicious. Too fancy. I don't even know what that is. What do you mean you so don't like know slider, what that is? But like a grilled cheese slider? I guess so. Yeah, that would. Yeah. No, it's just a smaller. It's, sure, it's like, but it's Tim, like slider It's like size. the small bread from Spinal Tap. Sounds like so- Well, then why do you keep folding it over? <laughs> <laughs> Just made with I, smaller bread. I mean, I guess it's okay, but it's not what I'd want at a Christmas party. Like why? That, that, I want the things I grew up with and that I like. I want the little gherkins and the crackers and the cheese, and I want the chicken bones in the candy dish. He and wants I like want a box of triscuits and a and like a a, a slab of cheese. Yeah, and I want, a but box not of like quality. good cheese, just like craft slab. No, and, and I want a box of quality street on the table that's open, and I want like your cheddar cheese, your mozzarella cheese, your Swiss cheese. You Why are you candy. demanding everybody has your same Christmas Low taste. and your like childhood experiences? Hold on, Paul, ha- Paul has something to say. Chicken bones in a candy box? What What are you talking about? I don't like understand that reference. Candy bowl. Oh, you, do you not know what chicken street. bones are? No idea. Just Google chicken bones right now. They're fucking disgusting. Oh, chicken bones are delicious. For oh, the people who that. don't know, they're peppermint they're, candy filled with chocolate. They're they're awful. And do you know who likes them, Jeff? Do you know what he's talking about? No, but I love like I love peppermint. Like I love a candy cane. No. Love that shit. No one. The only other person I know who likes chicken bones is my grandma. It's a real like Tim. Sounds gross. The um, the Christmas party you want to go to, you can go to. It is happening at the old folks' home by your house. It is true. That, that, that this is the perfect party. Tim, for you know how you I'm like just, the like the after Halloween when like the candy's on sale. I like the post Christmas when like there's even this like PC peppermint ice cream. I think it's delicious. I have that in my freezer right now. It is so good. It might not be as good as I thought. <laughs> Literally never seen those things before in my life. Yeah, they're gross. The one story because that they comes they up. They up at the Metro, not the, oh, you're talking about The chicken. story behind the weirdest maritime Christmas candy is yeah, what the gross. CBC is calling it. I thought everybody knew about chicken bones. No, yeah. no. never, located never to seen. I have no Sorry. idea what this is. It's a, it's a regional delicatessen, I guess. It's, it's like scrunchins in Newfoundland, which is fried back fat. Oh, scrunchins are good. It's literally, you take pork fat. 
from the back of the pig and then fry it and then eat it. That's it. They're good, They're good with baked beans. But yeah, my buddies are planning like to go to Star Wars and eat Chinese food on Christmas. Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll have already seen Star Wars by then. Are you watching the new Star Wars show? No, no. I'm not watching. You don't, I don't have, know. I don't, you don't have I Disney don't, Plus? I, I do not have the Disney Plus yet. I'm not opposed to getting it. I just don't have it yet. Okay, let's give a recommendation, Jeff, of hors d'oeuvres people can easily make for their guests that are delicious. The mini grilled cheese is a good one. I like that one. Sliders in general are pretty good. Uh, I will say if you buy like full jalapenos, if you take the jalapeno, like the actual pepper, you cut it in half and like scrape it out. You put cream cheese in it and then wrap it in bacon and you throw that shit into the uh, the oven for around 25 minutes. The bacon will cook yeah, around I've it. I've had that before. And that is jalapeno poppers. delicious. No, but you know, you're talking about the deep fried ones. No, no, no. I've had them. I've had friends actually make them from scratch the exactly the way you oh just described. Okay, it. but that would be too bizarre. fancy for you. Do you know what I love? And I never get it. I never get it. I only get it when we go visit the old people in Florida. Oh, this a Christmas like ham. Yeah. From this Jew boy. Like, oh my Christmas God. Ham is delicious. Love that shit. I'm love not it. A, I'm not a ham person. I'll eat that one uh once every two years when I'm in the right place at the right time. In the right city. It's okay, but I'm on team turkey. No, turkey's great too, but you don't understand. I don't get ham. When we have there's, like Rosh Hashanah dinner, there's no honey glazed <laughs> no, no. ham on the table. But I know Paul is a big team is on team ham. Oh no, I'm anti ham. I hate it. I thought you were, I thought you loved ham. I'm sorry. Ham is literally the worst. Yeah, apparently it is the nut low, but I guess it's this thing that like I didn't no, have. You, or... you don't get it. Yeah. So if you do get a roast it. pork, I mean a ham with a bone in it is different than like the 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 lowest of the low is like the little like farmer's ham, like whatever they call it, the ham? one, no, the one that you get for like, like nine bucks. I'm talking what about like the ham a carving ham station, bought? like yeah, what about the ham? The ham that Cam bought at uh, Giant Tiger that he had to fry up because it was too because it was too. That, that Imagine was, that buying was spam. Uh. <laughs> or the chicken balls that were just balls of chicken instead of chicken balls. I mean, your favorite chicken balls are the ones that are just batter and no chicken. Oh, those are so good. There's a place here locally. I don't want to get too maritime centric, but there's a place here called Look Ho Ho that makes which them is the worst chicken it's balls so bad. in the city. It's, it's so very good. easily the worst Chinese food restaurant now. Oh, you know it what, though? So it's so bad. Here's the thing. Sometimes with the Chinese, like the local, like this, it's so bad, it's good. I I, I don't know. But there are other places I know what it Tim is talking better. about. So like sometimes you just need it, but you better be prepared for what's going to come after. No, it's, it's like not good to eat. Like it tastes bad. Well, that sucks. Oh, it's, no, <laughs> but, but it's the only place Tim knows, so it's great. Well, he had it when he was seven years old. Pat and his taste buds have not evolved, so he can't try a different place that's highly recommended by friends and family. I grew up eating it all the time when I was young, and uh, I will never forswear it. It's bad. I used to live right next to it. It was terrible. Let's get back to the games. I want to. Oh, go ahead. I was just hoping he'd have like a mall tip. Yeah, do you have any bandwagon mall season? Is that next? Is that next week? Mall tip is next week. Stay tuned, folks. That's a that's a tease. That's good for the SEO. The first thing up here, I want Jeff to explain this because we were talking about it before the show. Can you explain to people how you park coming here? Your strategy on parking? Because you had to switch lots to (laughs) account for the attendant who gives out tickets so you could park for free. They're not watching. You can tell us. Okay. I've worked in this like area for a long, long time. So I have a vibe with the lots and the guys that come around and give the tickets in the underground lots. They're very consistent with their schedule. When we record in football season, I park in a different lot than when we record in golf season because there are different times. It's like kind of simple. You see, when I go into the lot, like you see anyone that has a ticket, I'll like um, look at what time is on the ticket. And they're always the same. These guys do not change their stripes. They veer just a little bit. They could get me good. And this is downtown Toronto. It's not like New York, but bro, shit's running always. Saving yourself a lot of money. Yeah, sure. 
Tim, do you think you could optimize a strategy like that? The, the lots are like beside each other. Also, it's not like like it's like half a block. It's, do, it's, do you think it's the same guy? He does the one at one. No, time because they're different. The they're different companies. I mean, I'm not perfect. I don't bat a thousand, but cost benefit analysis, I'm on top. Not to mention <laughs> these tickets, Pat. They're not real. Yeah, that's true. They're not real. They're not real. We used to have a guy at Fantasy. Well, you remember Ariel? Anytime you had tickets, just go to Ariel. Ariel will get those okay. tickets wiped away. No, there's different You would just ones. call in and complain if and threaten to sue people. The ones from the city are real. Agreed. Because they'll hold you. You can't renew your license. You get pulled over. Those ones will, will, will hold and they'll stay on your record and you better pay them. Those ones, you don't really have a choice. Now, if you get them, you can just file a thing and say, like, it's too expensive. And they'll, like, take a $30 ticket and, like, say, give us $10. you are like, deal. But um, the tickets at, like, the private lots... And there's this big sign there. It says, parking is never free. And I snicker every time. It's like getting a ticket at the airport. Also tickets you don't have to pay. Yeah, no, listen. They'll, like, threat. They'll say, they'll, and they'll, like, th send you a letter saying they'll go after your credit. But, like, sure, like, take your $74 charge and, like, come after my credit. <laughs> That's all got, like, a perfect credit card and, like, mortgage. Like, I'm fine. I'm not. You're not sweating the collections? Yeah. But you also have, yeah, and they're not going to collect that either. Like, there's a cost. I'm sure if you got, like, 14 tickets and they're like, this guy owes us thousands a thousand dollars or 1500 they might be like, okay, let's send this one to the collector and try to get what we can. But it's not worth them paying the freight to collect for, like, a couple of tickets. I would assume I they haven't. Time. Tim would pay these tickets, by the way. I got a parking ticket one time in my life, only once. What? and. I what knew, are you? What are you? I knew when I Rules. parked that I shouldn't have parked on this side street because I knew it said two hour parking and my exam was three hours long. It was around this time of year. And I had an exam to take and I had to park nearby. And I did. And I came out. And there was a ticket. And my and I thought I you know, it's funny. So I did the exam. I thought I killed the exam. And, and of course, I actually had killed the exam. I feel really great about things. It was the last exam really before Christmas. And I'm walking to my car from the university and I see the ticket and I went from feeling great to feeling so sick and depressed and sad within a second. I was, cause I knew now the rest of my day is going to be, I have to go immediately downtown. I've got to pay this ticket. I've no, got you got to get like it. a month. Well, I paid it that <laughs> very day. That afternoon. <laughs> it probably wasn't even in the system yet. I paid it instantaneously and got it done. And I have never, ever, ever since, parked anywhere where i thought there's even a remote chance well i, could, I don't I like your old. rules like well, that you play by the rules yeah, too very much, much by the rules but that's actually disingenuous only because you know how like you've scouted out when the people come along so yeah. you won't get parking tickets tim has done the opposite so he sees when the like the meter maids and those people are coming up and he just parks in the handicap spot and drags his foot when he gets out of the car so they're like oh he must have forgot his thing at home that's what Tim does. Listen, Tim, Tim's real sneaky. Like I, I spent a decade. Never do that. <laughs> I spent like eight years working across the street from like nine to five or like actually all kinds of hours. Sometimes like there was a few years where I had like the two to like 12 horrible. But so I, I know the area. I know these lots. So um, Tim and I went to the same college. If people were ever wondering how Tim and I know each other, we met in college. So I had a different parking strategy from him because I used to drive every day. Um <laughs> What? You certainly did have a different parking strategy. So I would just go park on wherever, like close to the school. So I could just like walk straight to my class. Uh, but I just saved, like I'd get one ticket and then I just saved that ticket. So when I went and parked, I just put the ticket underneath my thing. When I'd show up in the afternoon and people just walk by me and not give me another ticket. It looked like they had already ticketed See, me. See, I'm not going to lie. I had tried that. It so, some meter maids the guy's are like, savvy to he's it. He's like, I Other didn't get that car. And like, especially because a lot guy. of the time this was in the middle of winter. You really think they want to go scan in the middle of winter yeah, no. to go check it? Oh, yeah. No, they do not. And I feel... This is an indoor parking. This is outdoor parking. Yeah, they just know they got to meet their... Listen, they they show up back at back at uh, head base and they didn't write a single ticket. That's bait. But they know they only have to like meet a quota. They would also do a thing where... They would come out and they would draw a chalk line in front of your front tire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for sure. so you gotta sometimes wipe it, I, you move the tire. Yeah, sometimes oh, I would just yeah. kind of come out and move my car like two inches forward. Yeah, absolutely. Just basically just put, push down the clutch and let it roll for a little bit with the e-brake off, and then boom, just try not to hit the car in front of me. 
get you out of a lot of stuff. That way you don't have to pay for parking. If I had money, I would have paid for parking. I didn't have any money. I love the mental picture of Tim. Like, like freaking sl- out no. over a parking ticket? Slaying the exam. Walking out of that. Like just popping his. Like just walking. Swagging back to his car. Thinking like did I get like 90 or 94? No. No. We're talking about Tim here. As so, someone who went to school with Tim. It's either did he get 98 or 100. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> On like advanced exams. Okay. <laughs> I agree. I was just trying to pull it back the slightest. No, that's not what so we're yeah, talking about. So yeah, that's the here. debate. Did I get like 95 or 100? That's all that's going through his head, and he knows he crushed it, and he's snickering in his head at the poor sap two seats over that he knew struggled so goddamn hard. Me. Me and you. Trust me. And then, I can't even read. If I felt like I crushed an exam in university, I assure you a parking ticket would not have brought me down. Why don't you check your privilege, Jeff? I crushed so few exams. <laughs> trust me. I saw the picture on Twitter yesterday, or not yesterday, a couple of days ago, of the exam hall with 700 desks in it. And just the sight of it made me shiver. Do you know my least favorite thing other than the exams itself? I, I would rather be 10 minutes late than five minutes, 10 minutes early. I like I, I no mean, those psychopaths sitting outside of the room with their books open. I like to be prepared. There's one thing like the only reason. What that do you I, mean prepared? How does that? That has nothing to do with being prepared. What being there early? Yes, I think uh, it you does. could be okay. I would be on campus, but I would not be within like 300 feet of the room. Yeah, I just I'd stay outside the door. I'd go for a cig, and then I'd walk in. We'd be good. You know to go. what I'm talking about. I need about, to right? sit. I need to know who I can cheat off of. I need to see my peripheries. But they don't let I you in to. there yet. Oh, you can actually sit in the room. Yeah, a lot of the times. I'm talking about this mass of humanity lollygagging outside the door. Really? Oh no. If it wasn't for exam, like I would actually go scout classes as I ended up getting deeper into college, where I would only want to do things that like I had no time for assignments. Not really my speed. I just liked writing tests. If it was tests only, like an essay and two exams. I mean, Tim, that the, how many times did we take that one professor who just only had exams? Yeah, exactly. And he was great. And I like, listen, I like exams too. It was only a couple of times in my life I had to go into one of those rooms with like 500 desks to write an exam. And just, there is something profoundly unnerving about 600 people being dead silent, all writing at the same time. It's just something sort of unnatural you're not used to seeing such a thing well, uh, so you are, sort of- i am bringing back you are bringing me back to the state of hopelessness as i'm sitting there before these oh, exams even if i had no idea what was going on pat mayo was a game time player you put an exam in front of me i don't care what it is i'm passing it and i'm, yeah, probably, doing- oh, I didn't and fail I, and I'm any- probably doing well on it too i didn't fail anything but let's just say i knew exactly what i needed to get and I got there and oh, you people were the worst. When I used to teach courses, the students would write me, you know, in advance saying, Hey, what did I get on that final paper? Cause I got to know, do I need a 90? Do I need a 60? You, you, you think I wrote asking what I got? Well, you wouldn't I... know because I, I would not upload my grades into any system. You knew your grades when I gave you the paper. I back. know when I'm writing what, what it's good for. And I know like, okay, this okay. thing's at to like a 72. We are done. There's okay. no polish on this. That, that's a C. That's a C minus paper right there. Right there, we're in. That's sorry. We all are wired differently. Just, I wish I had what you had at times. Okay. I don't. Fair as enough. we're talking about these exam rooms, I have one really bad moment. <laughs> save, save that. I just want to give. And if there's younger people, you know, obviously college students do it. Read the entire fucking thing before you start. Oh my goodness! Yes. Read like, people don't do that. People get so, like, freaked out at exams. Read every single question in full before you start doing anything. Before you answer a question? Before you answer a question. I wish I had this advice. You you need to to know what each question is worth so you can allocate the appropriate time per question. Um, Oh, this one's worth the most? Let's do that one first. Yeah, don't start at question one. You can start in almost every course you're in. The te- professor will say, I don't care what order you do the questions in. Just make sure they're clearly marked. And je- start with the most important ones and the ones you know best. Get your what, confidence. What about a multiple choice? You'd read all of them? Well, that's no, different. that's I'm asking. I mean, I would on a multiple choice because I would just scan through them and then be like, which ones do I instantly know? Because it's multiple choice. Both- you'll know, right? 
But with you multiple do that choice, anyway. It's I'm like playing Family you. Feud Fast Money. Like, you know what you know. And you yeah, sure, but I want to get through and, it then really start back. to think. But sometimes, the one thing that I have found out through exams over the years, I mean, Tim created an exam, so he can speak to this too. Sometimes there's answers to previous questions and later questions. You just took the words out of my mouth. Yeah. I would oftentimes have potential answers in like on question 34. Well, then question 68 that's multiple choice, might also have something that you, if you knew thir saw 34 first, you'd know 68. And, and again, that's testing reading comprehension and critical thought. Like the, the, the test is, is multifaceted. So yeah, this is a tough time for students. I get it. I know it. I went through it on both sides of it. Get lots of sleep the night before your exam. Read the whole thing. Get there with plenty of time. And, and, and again, be strategic. Answer the hardest questions the ones worth the most, sorry, answer them first if you can. Answer the ones you know best also early on. Get that confidence up. Make sure you make sure you spend the most time on the questions that have the greatest weight and spend the least time on the questions you don't know much about or have the least weight. Uh, it's just that's the plus EV move when it comes to writing exams. He's not wrong. Paul has a comment here, but I just did want to say as well is that the very first question on any exam, just naturally, no matter what you do, you're going to spend the most more time thinking about that and create like coming up with an answer for it. If it's like an essay type of question or if it's a math problem, you're going to spend more time trying to hammer down on that. And generally speaking, the first question is worth the least points of any part of the test. Tim said, get a lot of sleep the night before an exam. I disagree. You just get a pot of coffee, put it in the refrigerator, slam that thing, stay up all night. You do your best work in the grind. That's the Paul Shag way The Paul Shag boom. I mean, most people I know just crushed Adderall the night before and just stayed up. That wasn't really, I didn't even know that was a thing I, in university. No, I'm sure that. it's rampant now. But some poor folks, like they'll have an exam at 8.30 and then an exam at 2.30 that day. Like you, you can't possibly get through that 2.30 exam if you haven't slept the night before. No, that's not true at all. Oh, I disagree. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, very I, I highly disagree. disagree. But- because I used to like just staying up all night because I was up all night anyway. But uh, I think the key move on exams, I'll, t I'll give a sh big shout out to my buddy Shiz on this one. He had his midterms <laughs> and he did the best strategy I've ever seen. It was Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving, but we were in Canada. So there was exam or midterms on Thanksgiving, the end of November. Maybe it was the beginning of his exam period. Either way, he just didn't go and watch football instead, then withdrew from the classes. <laughs> That's the plus EV move to him. Remember, we used to have an instructor who, after the first evaluation, would write the withdrawal date on the chalkboard. Yeah, that was, that was the same guy who only did exams. Yeah. He's like, here's, point, here's where you have to drop this class. Yeah, and he would point to the, he would write on the board all the number of A's, the number of B's, and, and if he would point to the D's and F's and say, if you got this, here is the withdrawal date so you can protect your GPA. I'm just telling you, that's the move. <laughs> he was fantastic. Best professor I ever had. Yeah, he was great. But again, folks, you know, in the end, it's just a test. It is not life. You'll be fine. If you put the time in the study and you approach it strategically, you'll do fine. Jeff, what was your story going to be? I just don't want Tim to hate me. No, go ahead. <laughs> Professor Tim will just be so, so disappointed in you. <laughs> I mean, you already you had parking tickets. He's already disappointed in you. Somebody once dropped their dip cup during an exam I was proctoring. It couldn't be worse than that. Could have thrown it at you. Let's say the best way to put this. I've definitely moved some sand before. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Who hasn't? Yeah. Just putting it out there. <laughs> I, I don't have a slightest idea what that means. <laughs> he doesn't know. Not an expression I'm familiar with. What, what? Well, in the vernacular of modern moment in time, what? what as there, does moving sand mean anything to you? I'm going to put it into the Urban Dictionary right now. This is what I have to do all the time. I'm actually really curious what the Urban Dictionary is going to say. And I'm surprised he hasn't caught on. Urban Dictionary. It, doesn't, it just says sand. <laughs> what, is, what does sand come up as in Urban Dictionary? I'm curious. Old fashioned for courage. For no. porridge? Yeah. I you lack like I lack sand. courage. You would say, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, cur old uh, courage. It takes a lot of sand to face me down. Resolution. Should we help him or just yeah, move on? Give him, give him the insight. Tim, on this past weekend, did anyone move some sand? 
Now uh, I'm confused the entire uh, thing. Now I don't know what you're talking about. Now I understand. I understand. You grounded your club in the sand trap, did you? Uh, I move. I move no, some that, sand, bro. Good. I move sand. Whatever it takes. What do you think? Listen, my dad would have sent me home. I had to keep it above a certain point to keep hanging with my buds. What uh, <laughs> point of college <laughs> hanging with your buds? I, I'm, <laughs> and it's fair. Do you want to know the honest to God's what, truth? What do you think the percentage of people who cheat on exams in college is? I'd say eighty-five percent. Oh, it's significantly lower than that. L- lower than that. No, I don't mean like I don't mean like cheat all the time, but like have cheated on a test or a oh, game in at college. least in college. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I think it's pretty it, low. Sixty percent, over half have definitely at one point. Oh. Paul, Paul, what'd you say? I think it was way more rampant, like when we were going through university, because it wasn't so easy to like Google, like Google searching wasn't so good. You couldn't just take like a paragraph and just find exactly where people were getting stuff from. I saw a guy like, I was I trying to cheat hard off one now. time in like a, I think it was like macroeconomics. It was an exchange student from China, and he had a translator. Okay, was that a thing when you taught him when the exchange students would have translators that they could use I, during I never, exams? Oh, I never yes. encountered that. No, so I never the, encountered that. So this one guy had a translator. He also had like, and this was back in probably like 2005, 2006, like pre like smart smartphones, pre iPhones. But whatever he had was connected to the internet. He was just looking up answers the entire time. Yeah. On all levels. I mean, the, the simplest trick was in those calculators in the sleeve. Oh, you got so you got a TI-83 going? Just program the answers in. Whatever. I was taught the first time I proctored an exam, if there's any gents wearing baseball caps, you turn those around because people use the bill of those caps to write answers on. I oh. was not ruining a good hat. Yeah, I was going to say, that, that, that's, that, that's like 1950s <laughs> yeah. cheating. I, I, feel, I, feel, I feel like it was a bit more advanced when you were teaching in 2012. No, people You know were, what? <laughs> I didn't kick sand, Pat. I fucking threw my ball out of the bunker. Yeah, no one was lucky. You kicked like, it out of the I, woods. Yeah, out of, oh, we're behind a tree on a rock? I literally kicked it four this feet This is why that way. I would walk down the aisles while I proctored again. Tim, you're not. Yeah, you're walking down the aisle. Yeah, eventually, you turn around, Tim. Eventually, you walk down a different aisle. And when you're. I got eyes in the back of my head. <laughs> now. No, 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 no. You'd be the perfect TA to have monitoring what's going on. That's rampant yeah. cheating in your class. He's not even, he's like a step behind. He's worried about ball caps. Yeah. The kids are like seven steps ahead of a ball cap. Yeah, it's like the Patriots got cheating once. Yeah, you're not catching them all the other weeks, Tim. And I used to despise it when my students would come in before I let them into the classroom. Oh, that used to drive me crazy. It took me time and my TA's time to lay the tests out on the desk the way I wanted them. So there's spaces in between each desk. And you have students coming in and they're throwing their bags everywhere. Don't do that. Don't. don't the, the, it's a stressful time for professors and for teaching assistants too because they got to grade a ton of exams and final papers. So another great tip is just to, to facilitate things. You know, just don't don't. Add Wouldn't you ever stuff. just know what a kid is capable of and just say? No, 74. Fuck that. Oh my goodness. Never, I, never. No, I would say never either. I'm fucking paying money to go to this school. Exactly. So if I'm passing a class, you're like some fucking asshole who's not doing anything past. Fuck that. Fail them. That's the problem with college, Jeff. Oh, college sucks. Yeah. The college college used I, to be a good thing. You oh get a college God. degree, that meant something. Why? Because did, people did what you're talking about. It means fuck all. It means bullshit. Yeah, it's bullshit. I wish I fucking was an electrician. No, you don't. But then you wouldn't have been able to hang with your a good, A good trade. I don't know. You, better. You, there's no way you'd ever be a tradesman. Just like I would never be a tradesman. No, not like me, but I don't know. Better than fucking anything college teaches you. Oh, no. no I, 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 I get, gather what you're saying is that the, the practical knowledge of what you learn at trade school is probably more valuable than what you do in, yeah. oh, in, in, much, in for any arts degree, let's say. Yeah, or you get like a communications degree and entry level is free intern. Yeah. No, I'm with you on that. Oh, but you're saying insane. you wish you were an electrician. Oh, you do not wish you were an electrician. Hands. Yeah. They don't know My dad's a le- plumber. Like, he basically just told me, like, don't be a plumber. <laughs> I wish I was a farmer. You said you could be. You can be a farmer if you want to. I, I think in another life, I would have been a superb gentleman. It's not too late Was to it buy on, a plot. He already and, lives in like the country anyway. But were you a part of the show? I, mean, I think it was with Gary where Tim said he'd make a good farmer because he could do things like right in the evening. That's a big part of farming, <laughs> according to Tim. <laughs> you have to he wants to be a farmer outdoors. from colonial times. You have to spend time outdoors to be a farmer. For the record, Tim. that's tough, to, isn't it? Tim? As a great endorsement, that that may be a, a challenge. Well, I, I've been uh, been made an endorsement through years of conditioning, like uh, in my natural state, perhaps with a you know piece of hay in my in my uh, in my teeth and the straw Just, hat. 
pair of overalls standing behind the tiller and the plow and uh, what what till you know to till the land oh i thought you, i thought you just said uh, till like you were like charging for something you were, like I, selling no, pumpkins no, no. So grateful that we went to school in the era, just as the electronic copy oh, yeah. of the essay was like in its infancy. Like some teachers, would, it was it was actually way less teachers would ask for it than than who would. Now I'm sure it's mandatory. Oh, you you could when I was, but I could write any anything. Tim, when we were in undergrad, you could go on Wikipedia and basically copy Wikipedia, change a few words, and people would be none the wiser. Yeah, now. I mean, as yeah. from my side of things, if any time I when I was grading assignments, time I came across a sentence that I was suspicious of, you just type it into the Google machine in between quotation marks. Boom, there it is. Boom. Yeah, like you'd be, but the professors weren't sad. Like Tim, as a professor, is a lot savvier than most like of these ancient professors. Oh yeah, not yeah, exactly. Paul, uh, just a small little detail there. He did say that he would type it into. The like, why oh, yeah, I aren't they giving I, you electronic copies and you could have just copied and pasted? Or are you actually well, typing in? We sentences? just found out what cut and paste was like a week ago. Fair. I would not accept electronic copies except in uh, emergencies. I preferred them to print you them know, off, staple them, bring them in because a that made that meant they had to come to class that day, and b I find I read things better and more comprehensively when they're in paper. I prefer to lean back rather than lean forwards and look at a screen, and I find I make more effective notes by hand on the margins than with uh, comments. On Microsoft Word. So I just found like it did, I, my job was better uh, and did better when I wrote on the papers. Plus, there is something I think a student gets that extra show that the professor worked at your paper. That's his or her writing on the paper. They read it. They flipped through it. I don't know. It, in my old fashion, sure. But that's the way I, until just recently, like that's the way I, I all. I actually agree with them. I have the greatest story ever come to think of it. One of my buddies in school was like day of like right against the wire for an essay wasn't going to even be at the class because he was still like working on it at home but would have it at the professor's office by like end of day and he wrote the teacher to try to figure out where the teacher's office was that's how like little he even knew couldn't even find the syllabus <laughs> you write is that because he took the silly bus to school <laughs> this gets better so he writes the teacher an email, he finds it, gets uh, an email back, or just finds the last thing he sent on via that teacher, and the email back is from no reply at western or uwo.ca. This guy spent an entire afternoon running around campus looking, asking people for Professor Norply's office. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 I swear to God, he's looking in the directory for Professor Norply. <laughs> it was so good. That was amazing. We died. Tim was a people used to. I mean, Tim was a hard ass professor, so students would always come crying to him for better marks oh, or extensions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, Tim is pretty stead, but Tim. Pays his parking tickets day of. You think he's going to give you an extension for no reason on anything? What's the most pathetic one you've heard, Tim? Uh, I had one student who asked for an extension because they wrote their paper on the notes function on their phone the night before, <laughs> and it didn't transfer over to Microsoft Word well, and they didn't own a printer. And so they wanted to know if they could have an extra day. Why couldn't they just use your printer? They, there are printers in the library if they wish to use those. Someone made a great joke on the internet that the universities will charge you five, 10 cents a page, but the condoms are free. <laughs> it's like getting your, getting your report in is less important than getting a free fuck or like a free condom. Well, I mean, if they're, they're already charging you money, you have a kid at a wedlock when you're like 21. I mean, okay. You're not going to have much money in the future. Your earning potential is going to go way down. My entire college life has flashed before me and I did a very Seinfeld thing, episode thing in college. But no, no, I take that back. It wasn't Seinfeld. You pushed all the women and children out no. of the way of a fire? Because what I was dealing with <laughs> was real, but it wasn't like a big deal to me. So as I've I mentioned before, I guess going into my final year at school, I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Thyroid cancer is... The, if you're going to have a cancer, it's probably the greatest cancer to have. It's treatable. It's a surgery. It's the good Hodgkins of Hodgkins? Sure. I would put it that way. Simple, done, a little operation, scar gone. I got to take a pill every day. Simple. 
But oh, baby, I got a doctor's note from like the University of Toronto, like hospital network saying I have cancer. Every professor got it and I did whatever the fuck I wanted and they did not care. They're probably happy you're just healthy. Yeah. Yeah. But I, it, I would have accommodated in any way, shape, or form had I gotten that note. If you yeah. And it, they didn't know some you, teachers you like might it. know that the the grasp of it or like that is serious or not serious, but I literally didn't have to do like I took it and pushed it as far as yeah, I, I could go. I, I would require physician's notes, but if I got one and it was like that, uh, anything you need, sure. Anything. Anything I needed. So that's a that's a legitimate one though. Yeah, yeah, that's why I know in the Seinfeld, John Lovitz didn't actually have yeah. cancer. So I took that back. I just thought he was playing. I, but no, real. real. Any, any other good ones, Tim? I get you to tell that one, but that's like tragic. So I don't want to tell that one. There was someone, <laughs> someone came up with this like ridic ridiculous story to Tim. But it was true? But it was true. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's yeah. Cool. We will not tell that story. And when Tim said it, 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 it sounds really fake. Tim told him he's way. full of shit? What's that? Did no. Tim accuse him of being full of shit? No, I don't I mean, think so. Did you, Tim? No, I was so unbelievable that I had to believe it, and it was true. <laughs> <laughs> what, like, what does it involve? We no, need to. No, we need what? the people need no. to know at this point. No, As the producer, I'm putting my yeah. foot down. He kind of feels like he's dead. Like, we yeah, I mean, it's, we can't just hang. We no, can't just dangle it out like that. Like, oh, it's so hilarious. Come no, on, man. I'm sorry. Come it's it's not know. hilarious whatsoever. No, it's it's not hilarious, and I don't. I, he, let's move on. Yeah. From I I'll give. I'm not going to press him for it. Yeah. yeah. Cuss corner. It's cuss corner. Cuss corner. It's cuss corner. He's got the hottest takes with the highest stakes. He should be president of the United States, but it's Cuss Conan, it's Cuss Conan, Cuss Conan, hee hee hee.